I have to be ready? It looks ready to me. Yeah, you look ready. If you guys want to lightsaber, by the way, I'm ready. I'm ready. Like, like, but they're over there. Do you want one? <laughs> no. All right, welcome Just back. Throw matter. <laughs> Welcome back Random. to the Bonsai, Randomly. Bonsai Movie Crew. She hits me in the eye. Where every week we talk about oh. another movie. <laughs> They're talking about lifesavers and shit. <laughs> Throwing candy. People. It's important. Candy. Uh, as usual, make sure you check out our TikTok, which Madison will get on. Right, Madison? Yes. Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube, of course, because that's probably where you're looking at her beautiful faces. Also, don't forget about our Rumble and to make sure you like, share, subscribe, and all that good funky shit, and uh, comment and all that good stuff. And make sure you go to our Spotify if you're listening to the podcast or whatever, and make sure you give us a badass rating because we're fucking badass. Why wouldn't you? Duh. <laughs> or if you're on YouTube and you're like, have the Spotify. Right. Just yeah. Or just do it. Oh, I think you have to listen to an episode. In order to rape, you can skip rape people, it. don't don't do that. <laughs> but if they've already watched it on YouTube, true, good point. Yeah, yeah. If you're on YouTube, just go skip through the episode and then rate us. If you skip like us enough, watch it twice. <laughs> that too. Yeah, or watch it and then listen to it while you're at work. Yeah, or while you're doing whatever. Maybe you're maybe making, you listen to it at work and then go home and maybe watch you're it. giving your wife a little pickle tickle you know listen to us there whatever whatever floats your boat don't get fired your though, wife you get a fired pickle tickle you can't giving the wife a pickle tickle your wife has a pickle no i'm saying you you p- tickle her with your pickle okay yeah i think you, it, you did say it. You just, just the way you haven't you ever seen haven't you ever seen uh league of our league of our own yeah the part where uh what's his face he goes i'm gonna go home give my wife a little pickle tickle and be back at it I don't remember that part. No, it was part no. where uh, what's his name? Um, God damn it, he was in. He was used to be on SNL and everything else. He was in uh, Little Nicky. He's been all kinds of stuff. He was in. Um, oh man, he was the guy watching the girl outside the tree, outside the room in Little Nicky. Oh, John Lovitz. John Lovitz, yeah, <laughs> that was him. Yeah. He says it in in uh, League of Their Own. Okay. I, I don't remember that, but yeah. Yeah, okay. he said they're like you're leaving. He's like, yeah. He goes, he said, now don't get too, don't get attached. He goes, no. I remember the don't yeah. get attached. And then he he goes on to say, I'm gonna go home and give life wife a little pickle tickle and be back out on the road. It does. That reminds me of the part on Clue at the end where the guy that's been like saying he's gay the whole time, he's like, I'm gonna go home and sleep with my wife. <laughs> Good for you, man. Good for you. Anyway, <laughs> uh, let's get into a little Three minutes bit of already news. off topic. Yep, pickles. <laughs> All right, let's talk about some news, man. Joseph's got some fucking news. All right, so uh, I don't have any news, really, but I will. But I had this idea. I'm going to go through, and I don't know if I know there's a lot of movies yet to come out this year. So I printed off a list of movies that you may not know are coming out this year that still have yet to be released or even have trailers re- released for them. A couple of these do have trailers, but I'm going to list them all off for you. And uh, just so you got your, you know, you're, you're, you're aware of what's coming out this year yet. Informed. Still to come. Yeah, what you can look forward to before the end of the year. So first off, we've got The Exorcist, Believer. Uh, this is directed by David Gordon Green, the same guy that did, brought you that whole Halloween franchise, that new trio of Halloween movies. Isn't that, it the same whole creative team or something? I don't know if it's the whole... I know he's the director. That's all yeah. I know. Um, so this one's going to star Leslie Odom Jr., uh, Ellen Burstein, and Ann Dode. I don't know any of them people. But it's set to come out October 13th of 2023, just in time for Halloween. Um... So I can give you a rough rundown of some of these. Um, Let's see here. So this is supposed to be, it says, as with his tackling the Michael Myers story, The Exorcist will follow up to the original and the 1973 original only and will reportedly unfold as the first of a trilogy, of course, with Ellen Burstein set to reprise her starring role. Yeah, she played the mom. Chris McNeil in the original. Or in, no. Shit. Are you sure that isn't? Girl, 
Who played the girl? The little no, girl? Linda Blair played the girl. Oh, that's right. It was Linda yeah. Blair. Yeah. But um, I heard that the early screenings didn't do too well. Like, Probably not as David Gordon Green. He yeah. sucked at making the Halloween movies. The first one wasn't it bad. It was okay. But then, like... But I don't know, man. Like, I don't know. I'm not They lost it somewhere it. in the middle of the yeah. second. Yeah. Especially that last one. It made no fucking sense. Yeah, the last one was bad. Um. Anyway, uh. so then you got Saw 10. Wait, Saw X, as Halloween it's put. Halloween Kills? I thought that you guys said that was a good one. The last one? No. The ho- Halloween Ends? Halloween Ends would have been good if it wasn't called Halloween Ends. If it would have just been a movie about that kid and all and that girl and all that, it would have been a good movie. Yeah, if it wasn't a if it was but it was a Halloween movie, movie yeah, and it, was, it but, made no fucking sense, and yeah. I didn't like it. Yeah. Oh. So, uh, all right. So you got Saw Ten coming out here. Uh, still yet, to, it doesn't have a release date yet, but it's directed by uh, Kevin Groot, Grudert. I don't know. Uh, starring Tobin Bell. Didn't he die? I say, isn't Wait. he dead? I mean, I not in real life, but like in yeah. the franchise. I don't know, man. I haven't watched like I since the third. What, I think. Saul? Yeah. Yeah, they should have ended after the third. Because he died. In the, the he died in the third screen. one, didn't he? So uh, I think so. They don't really know. Yeah, he died in like the third or fourth one because he had cancer or something. Yeah. yeah. Um. So this one, they don't know. They don't really know of anything about it. Um. All they know. Oh, it's supposed it's supposed to be premiering on October twenty seventh, twenty twenty three. So just in time for Halloween. Um, okay, so then we, I don't know, I'm sure a lot of you already know about this, but uh, Dune Part 2 comes out this year, uh, November 3rd, as a matter of fact. Um, uh, this was directed by uh, Dennis Villeneuve. Vel- Vel- that Villeneuve. is a fun Villeneuve. name. Yeah. Obviously stars Tim- Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya, uh, Rebecca Ferguson, Javier Bourdain, Josh Brolin, and Stellan Skarsgård. Um, obviously... If you don't know what that's about, then you probably don't care about the fucking movie. So, is it a horror movie? No, oh. it's like a it's fantasy a, sci-fi yeah, movie sci-fi kind of. Say, I've never seen movie, them. I just know the first one was really fucking good. I, know I really like the first one. I just know enough, like from you know back in the day, seeing bits and pieces of the yeah. old one. I never watched the original, didn't care, but I watched this one, the new one, and I loved it. I thought it was great. The whole like. The cinematic, the, the all the set pieces. I mean, the music. It just it set a great tone. I loved it. It was great. So, um, then we have a movie called The Killer, uh, directed by David Fincher, starring Michael Fassbender, uh, Tilda Swinton, Carrie O'Malley, and Charles Parnell. Uh, this one's set to come out November tenth, twenty twenty three, on Netflix. So Netflix release. You're gonna have to go to the thing for that. Um, Okay, so we don't know much about this film except that it is a neo noir. Oh, really? Okay, thriller based on a French graphic novel series, and it will star Michael Fassbender and Tilda Swinton among others. That kind of sounds interesting. That does actually sound pretty cool. Um, another thing, another one that you guys probably didn't know, another franchise that they're continuing on with here: Hunger Games: The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, um, directed by Francis Lawrence, starring Tom Blythe. Uh, Rachel Zegler, Peter Dinklage, Peter Dinklage? Oh, yeah, he is in it, isn't he? Uh, Hunter Schaefer, Josh, somebody else, Jason Schwartzman, Viol- oh, Viola Davis, be this. Um, this comes out November 17th, 2023, and if you want to see a trailer for this, the trailer is available on YouTube. Um, which I'm sure you guys, a lot of you knew that this was coming out. So this one had me kind of thrown for a loop. Uh, they're coming out with a Napoleon movie about Napoleon. But check this out. It's directed by Ridley Scott. Yeah. Ridley Scott. I'm like, huh. Okay. So this one's going to be starring and also Joaquin Phoenix as Napoleon. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Vanessa Kirby uh, and some other people. Um, So this one comes out November 22nd, 2023. I'm actually kind of interested in this, but only because it's Ridley Scott and Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah. I'm like, huh. I'm not big into biopics or anything. Like, nah. I don't like biopics that much. Nah. Like, who gives a shit? Um, but yeah, I'm kind of interested in that one, just because of Ridley Scott and Joaquin Phoenix. Um, here's another one with Tim- Timothy Chalamet. Uh, comes out this year. There's uh, comes out December fifteenth. Wonka, directed by Paul King, stars Timothy Chalamet, Olivia Coleman, Sally Hawkins, Rowan Atkins, uh, Keegan Michael Key. I hope Keegan Michael Key is playing the Oompa Loompas. 
<laughs> I fucking hope so, man. <laughs> I do. I hope so. I love King of Michael Keys. So, like, <laughs> after he played Toad, I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> you know? Him. Like, him playing them, All but, of like, the with Lumpers. Toad's voice. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Everybody knows the uh, the story of Willy Wonka and Charlie and all that stuff, so I don't even have to explain that. So do we really need another one? That's what I thought, too. Like, th- this will be the third time. But I don't know. I don't. Okay, so. Only if Charlie is like Wonka. You know, so this is an orange story. origin story. If they go, if it's this the is, origin story again? No, it's an origin story of Willy Wonka. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, all so right. this isn't going to be a Charlie and the Chocolate Factory deal. This is going to be Willy Wonka's okay. origin story. Okay, well, I can story. live with that then. So it'll be interesting. I'll, I'll, I'm Didn't interested. Did they do that with Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Where, like, they, uh, they gave a little I mean, bit of a gave, backstory. They gave you a little dab of it, but not. Yeah, but like, they didn't go into depth with anything yeah. or anything. They're just like, oh, yeah, he traveled the world his looking. His dad was a dentist. And his dad was a dentist. And his dad was a dentist, And that's why he's obsessed with it. Yeah. Um, also, uh, December 20th, 2023, not a lot is known about this one, but, uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife sequel, um, also directed by Jason Reitman. So which Ghostbuster are they going to kill off now? They, well, technically they didn't I kill know. him. I was going to say, he was <laughs> dead in real life. They, so. they, they, they just they gave him, him, you know, all, props just... and all Which that. was pretty cool, honestly. They did, they did a great job, job so. with the they first one. Job. Um... There's not a lot of details about this. Um, I'm not even sure. Oh yeah, we got a new prop. Speaking of Ghostbusters, it says that the old, the original stars, the kids, are most likely to return. It's not been confirmed, so we'll see. Um, but December, that's not far away for them right? not to know. Yeah, that's definitely getting pushed back. Sorry, guys. Uh, they're definitely they're, pushing if, that back. If there's any reason that the kids aren't in it, that it's not because they don't want to, it's because of some kind of obligation. Let's or just contr- keep pushing it's contractual. until we get everybody yeah. in. But the thing is, is like if it hasn't started filming yet, and they don't have like at least people lined up to star in the movie. It's not coming. I know, out in like Paul Rudd already signed on. Okay. I know him for sure because yeah, he, but he still, talked they about have it. to start filming like right, now, right. You like know, because not yeah. only do they have to film, but they have to get into post production. My thing else. is, is that they did such a good job casting in the first one that I don't see how they could recast, like especially the grandkids. Yeah, right. Unless like that, they, I just like bringing like some like Ray or you know. I thought what, Finn Wolfhard's. I think I think members. I kind of thought that Finn Wolfhard's character was a little. Yeah, I don't know. Dead, dead pan. Like he, he was wasn't weak. very. He was wasn't very. But I think it was on purpose because he would. Uh, this is this is how I think it was done. So he was boy. So he would have been the easy one to be like Egon's, like you know, direct. Right. Like, I like that it was a little girl. The little exactly. girl was amazing. Yeah, dude. that's she what I'm awesome. saying. So like he was kind of just off to the side because he wasn't the focal point. She was because she was so much like her grandfather. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this is one that I'm really excited about, um, and this is coming out December 22nd on Netflix, uh, directed by Zack Snyder, Rebel Moon. Um, this has a stack cast too. So this has got Charlie Hunnam, Sophia uh, Botella, which you would know as like the from the Mummy remake. She played the Mummy, um, which was a flop. I but... never saw it, but I, I didn't think it was trailer. that bad. But I could see why people didn't like it. So yeah. I do want to see it. I just it's can't. not it's not bad. It's just, but I love Tom Cruise though, so I'll watch anything with Tom Cruise. I know he's a fucking weirdo. Okay, I get it. I'm a little sad that it killed the rest of the universe just because it like, did. It completely destroyed. And yeah. I think that was the big banker that like I think Tom Cruise was trying to sign sign on to that whole expanded universe, yeah. and it kind of didn't pan out for him. Yeah, so, really. And usually kind of... he's good about like. I'm signing on to this because I have confidence in it. Yeah. And he's really good at making those kinds of business decisions. But in this case, I guess he was wrong. So, um, okay. So, uh, this stars, uh, Charlie Hunnam, Sophia Botella, Michael Hughes, Hughesman, uh, Carrie Elwes, Carrie, or Corey Stahl, Jenna Malone, Ed Skrine, uh, and some other people. Um, so, The, the the plot synopsis for this movie sounds way worse than I think it's going to be. So it goes like the story uh, the story centers on a peaceful colony who's threatened by a tyrant. Uh, sent tyrant by a tyrant 
send a young woman to neighboring planets to recruit an army. I must have not. I think this is a mistype here. Okay, uh, the film is scheduled. Yeah, it doesn't even. Okay, so never mind. I don't have a good synopsis because they mistyped it or something. Makes no sense. I'm not even going to read that. Never mind. <laughs> but anyway, if you're look interested, just look it up. They didn't uh, mistype. You didn't mistype that. But some that's of the, the some, dude, that's, some that's of like, actually the synopsis. well, some of the set designs look. I mean, they look okay, but it's got it's got to have that Zack Snyder sort of gritty feel to it. But also, uh, so some of the character design looks fucking amazing. So that's what I'm most excited for. And also, last but not least, I guess, if you're into this kind of bullshit, uh, Legally Blonde 3. Yes! <laughs> so, so if you're into that shit, um, so directed by Jamie Sook, obviously starring Reese Witherspoon and uh, Jennifer Coolidge. Uh, there's not a lot about this one. Um, doesn't even really have a Is release there a date. The other two? There's not a... Huh? What? 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 Huh? I don't know. But so um, there was was there a lot about the other two? That's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's no release date or anything like that, other than it's just coming out this year. So look forward to that if you're into that crap. Um, I think that's all I got for that. Um, do you guys have any news you want to throw in? I do not. No, I tried to look up the Jonathan Major stuff. There's still not anything going on there. I know that they had a trial set up, and they're going to start court proceedings here soon. And I still haven't heard anything else on Danny Masterson about his sen- sentencing. He's still, I guess, just sitting in jail waiting to be sentenced or whatever. What about the aliens? Unless they... I don't know nothing about the Not aliens the aliens either. in the movie, but like yeah, right, the right. aliens. Yeah, right, right. No, I don't know. No. I know. Nothing about that, so... We'll find out sooner. Yeah, right. I can only <laughs> tell you what uh, is, is told to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, we know uh, everything. Don't tell them that. We know everything. We know it all, but we don't want to tell you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. We, we just can't. We don't tell you until the media lets yeah. you know. Right, exactly. We can't all right, tell you. so Legally, we're not it's all very to. hush hush. Let's let's get into what everybody's been watching here. What the hell have you been watching? Let's uh, let's start with Karen since she's always got the most. Hmm. The mostest. Whose line is it anyway? I finished True Detective season three. And oh, ghosts. what do you think of season three? I liked it, but I think it was kind of just a rehashing of season one. A little bit, huh? Yeah. Yeah, but I did like the cops better. The, I like the cops in the season three better than any other season. Oh, for sure. Yeah. 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 I love that at the end they were still friends. And, they, and... and the thing, that, oh man, it was so heartbreaking that he found out what happened to her, but he couldn't remember. Mm-hmm. But That yeah. was like, oh, come on. She's right there. <laughs> yeah. But like, in a way though, it's kind of like good though because if it's he, nice for you because you have that comfort yeah, but he doesn't right but like you but know, i think but i think he's it's also a resolution for him because he's like eh. well <laughs> and also it's like if he did know would he've accidentally told someone and then she'd be in danger and blah blah, True, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you know what i'm saying yeah. so like it kind of was a fitting ending ending right. but you were kind of like oh poor guy like yeah like he just had he needed to know like you feel sorry for him but like he doesn't know that he doesn't know either so it's right. kind of like yeah, you know. I think I think uh, Yahya Abdul. Not that's not Yahya. What's his name? Um, Marhar, Marhar. I can't. I can't even say uh, Marharshal. Marharshal Ali. Thank you. Marharshal Ali. He's fucking great, dude. I'm he so is. glad he's gonna be playing Blade. So glad. Yeah. Because he's gonna make an awesome Blade. He's yeah. So fucking cool. I love I that dude. Very. He's so calm. Yeah, he's so calm and cool, dude. Like, yeah. I love watching him and shit. Yeah. So I'm excited for that. But yeah, I really, uh, I really liked three. Um. Yeah, and I watched uh, more of that ghost show, and that's it. I had a really busy weekend. Yeah, apparently, you didn't do that much. Madison, what did you watch this week? Uh, Well, I started watching The Mick on Netflix. <laughs> that is hilarious. I know. Oh, was, my God. I, just, I didn't even know what it was about because there was no trailer. There's no trailer for it yet on yeah. uh, Netflix, and I got into it. I just wanted to watch it because oh, it's man. Um, it's always sunny. We watched that. it when it was on TV. Really? And then, like, binge watched the rest of it. Oh, my God. Dude, I got on there in the first What's episode, so great about it? It's so... It, I can't it's remember funny. very well. I just remember, like, laughing my ass off and being pissed when I found out it got canceled. It got canceled? Yeah. I started a show that got canceled. You yeah. just ruined her dreams, Sorry, I thought, Karen. Dude, it came out like years ago, it and it hasn't had a new season in years. You fucking killed it for her, Karen. I'm going to read what year it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I bet she was busy as fuck, man. Because you know she was still doing it's she always was, sunny. Yeah, yeah. Like she was all I bet she well, was Glenn, busy. Well Glenn Glenn had that other show for a while, um, where he was like a teacher or something, doing both shows at the same time. Oh really? They've all done uh other stuff and like Mac, he's doing something right now with Ryan Reynolds. Uh, oh, he's, yeah, they're they're, they're they they bought a soccer team. Yeah, but I mean that takes up time. You know what I'm saying? They all have side gigs. And then they bought they bought the Wexham soccer team. They do a podcast together. Charlie Day. Yeah, I know they do that. Yeah. You know, so Yeah, Charlie Day's probably the most busy of all of them, Mm -hmm. I bet. He's always Well, it's movies and he's awesome. Did you guys the best um, character? No, him and his wife, the girl that plays the waitress. Um, the first thing they did was a Reno nine one one episode. Yeah. I I showed it to you, yeah. yeah. They um, play brother and sister. Oh yeah, that's right. You told in us a that. Trailer park. Yeah. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> they call it. Awful. They call it cops because he's trying to kill her baby, and they show up and they're like, "You can't kill a baby. You can't kill a baby." And he, a baby he, he comes out and he's got his hand on the baby's head. It's a baby doll. <laughs> they're like, "It's a squeaky baby. It's a squeaky baby. It's okay." <laughs> it's funny. And that was in. And Reno 911. That was before they It's Always Sunny. they him for like, popping oh. the head off or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, because they, they arrested him because he started like kicking and screaming at him or whatever. <laughs> then she gets in the car and starts French kissing him. They're like, you're a brother and sister. And they like break him up. <laughs> it's funny. It's really funny. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, I watched It's Always Sunny today, actually. With Dad, we watched... Uh... Well, I watched two episodes. He had watched an episode in five minutes because he said he didn't like the episode that much. I but just wasn't into it. Yeah. Which one was it? I thought it was funny. Uh, it was the one where um, uh, Frank, Frank back of, backed or ran into the back car. of Dennis's car and he spilled cereal all over his car <laughs> and he wanted uh, Frank to pay for it. Oh, by the way, D ended up paying for it in the end. Of course she did. D always gets a shaft. Yeah, she does. <laughs> <laughs> and they wonder why she's such a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> The only thing I remember from that episode, really, but it's mostly because of the meme, is you know the him eating the cereal and you dumb bitch, <laughs> <laughs> dumb bitch. Anyway, okay, and I think that's it. I watched a little bit of Walking Dead, not a lot, because I've been watching a lot of the Mick. The Mick. I literally that's all I watched last night. I don't and blame the you. Night before I, don't blame I got you. to season two in a day. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I watched a few episodes of Buffy the Vampire Slayer after I watched Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Like, the show. Yeah, Buffy the show. Movie. And, well, it was more Ada's thing than my thing. Oh, I already said that, didn't I? Yeah. Last week. Yeah. But, yeah. That's it. <laughs> All right, Eric. What so, you watch, oh, man? I, and Little Shop of I had a feeling. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. I had a feeling. <laughs> he did watch a little... I watched part of that, too. Little Shop of Horrors. The uh, original or the... The yeah, musical. The musical. Oh. musical. No, that's not the original. Yeah. The original is from like the 50s. 50s. Yeah. Yeah. It's black and white. Oh, yeah. And it's oh. actually a horror movie. And it's not a musical. Yeah, it's oh. not a musical. It's oh, really I forgot this. Serious, musical serious business. Started off with like singing and I was like... <laughs> oh. <laughs> I love that movie. She always she always tried to get me to watch it when you made me watch it when I was younger, but I I can never. Get I love into Little. It. Sh- that's like I one of my all time. I, I I couldn't get into. It. I'm not big. It's in probably music. it is. It definitely is my favorite musical. That was good. <laughs> you should have been in the play. I should have. <laughs> See more. <laughs> Give it a pause. We'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. You can go. I'm done. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Steve Martin's character is still the best, dude. Oh, yeah. Steve Martin kills it in that fucking movie. Yeah. He kills it. Yeah, the dentist. Steve Martin usually kills in anything he plays. <laughs> Almost said, you'll be a dentist. <laughs> the way he just... <laughs> the, the, the bike stops. Yeah. He's like... Oh. He's like Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> he, did, he did the dentist Elvis stuff. Yeah, he did. <sighs> All right, Eric. So I watched uh, the Zack Snyder cut for Justice League. Oh God, all four hours of oh, it! All the four hours. Oh, buddy, that was like the Why? one thing you must have been bored. Yeah, I watched it that too, and like I'm like, "This is so thing. long." <laughs> like at the end, yeah. you're like, "Oh no!" Like the first time I watched it, I had COVID, so I had nothing to do. So oh, I you watched, watched it, it twice? again? This is the second. You time had eight time. hours of your life to give, give to that? Yeah. Well, I, I watched it in like... The Snyder Cut is better than the original. Yes, though. I get it, but... But I watched it in spurts. I didn't watch it like all in one one shot. I was like... Okay, See, I think the first time I watched it... And watch it and yeah, I think know. the first time I watched it, I stopped it halfway through and came back to it. Yeah. 
Well, the first time I was <laughs> late in bed, so I just watched it the whole probably fell asleep a couple times but yeah <laughs> uh so watch that and then i watched uh resident evil the final chapter when are we gonna pull resident evil you really do have a lot of time to kill don't you no not really those are the only two movies i did watch hmm. this week and then i've just like played diablo that was about it uh i watched two episodes of it's always sunny today and that's it not even that's yeah not even full two episodes um i've just been playing video games in my free time <laughs> like i was playing an ass load of overwatch 2 and then i played that's pretty much it and then i played a shitload of diablo the past couple days yeah so i got up to level 22 today suck it <laughs> i i didn't think i was gonna like that game i was like 70 dollars for a fucking video game <laughs> uh, yeah. i was like it don't even look like a 70 dollar video game but I'm like, is. but I was like, but I'm like hearing good things about it. I'm like, it does look kind of cool. I'm like, I just don't know if it's seventy dollars. But I was like, fuck it, let's gamble this. Diablo is, and I'm like playing. I'm game. like, holy shit, this is totally worth seventy dollars. This game is awesome. Yeah, Diablo has <laughs> always been a good game, even back when like first. I'm not came big out. on dungeon crawlers, man, and I just got into it. I'm like, god damn, this game is fun. I mean, the graphics in this one. And oh, they're the, fucking baller, the dude. The ragdoll effects. Yeah, the the fucking cutscenes, everything. Yeah, it's, it looks it's, good. It looks really a, good. It's a good game. Yeah, I'm digging um, it. Like, that's what I was going to do. That's what I was doing before we ate dinner today. Yeah. <laughs> I was, like, trying to make up, like, trying to get everything printed out and everything. I'm like, I'm going to play some Diablo. <laughs> I haven't had time to get back on since sun, since Sunday. I'm not going to be able to play tomorrow, so, unless, well, I don't know. I might be able to later. I'll be on it probably tomorrow. <laughs> You're going to be like this, but, like. <laughs> yeah. We're going to be at a softball. Well, we got a softball <laughs> game. another Diablo. At, yeah, well, we got a softball game <laughs> at 7 o'clock, and I'm like, I'm like, come on, let's hurry the fuck up. Whether you win or lose, <laughs> I'm going home. Come on, Justin just, 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 just walks up to the umpire. <laughs> <laughs> we lost let's go how did we lose it well, doesn't it was, matter it was the second inning i don't give a shit <laughs> hand, him, hand him a fiver <laughs> don't tell him how you're out Just... you're out you're out i didn't even go yet <laughs> <laughs> i even swing at it yet <laughs> i wasn't even on deck yet what am i get on get on home or get on first base Safe. No, she's not. She's out. She's out. <laughs> Let's Jesse go. Just like runs and tackles her <laughs> off the base. <laughs> tagger, tagger, Give tagger. Me <laughs> Tripp, tripping his own players as they're running by. <laughs> go. Uh, walking through grease in everybody's gloves. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're knocking shit over, man. Throwing the baseball. Pick bat. up my picture. <laughs> that was a bad idea to put that picture in front of her. Yeah. Take my legs out there. I already hit it. Three times. He's gonna be on third. You're gonna be on third base telling your team to run when they're like they're right there behind. <laughs> no, just go, just go. Make it. No, I'm not that bad of a coach. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's all we've watched this week. Oh uh, man, I say we get into this fucking movie here. Let's talk about the movie. We could. Um. All right. Ah. Uh, no, I've got the plot synopsis and everything. You I can do? give you the page for it if you want it. Oh no, you're fine. You I got it right home. I, I, got, what? I got one here too. Well, then why did I? I wasted ink. Just use the paper. <laughs> <laughs> I wasted ink. Just use the paper. I mean, and I wrote this stuff down. Oh, well, there you go. I've got it for you. I'll just do it all from here since you spent so much time and effort. Aliens from 1986, directed by James Cameron. Ripley, played by Sigourney Weaver. Newt, played by Carrie Henn. Corporal Hicks, by Michael Bean. Burke, by Bean. Paul ben. Reiser. Bishop, by Lance... Lance? Lance? Lance. <laughs> I was trying Lance to say... Hendrickson? I was trying to say both names at the same time. Lance Henriksen, Private Hudson, Bill Paxton. Lieutenant... Did you write the whole cast? I didn't write this. I just copied and pasted. I only do four names. Lieutenant Gorman, William Hope, Private Vasquez, Jeanette Goldstein. I figure we should at least go to Vasquez. Well, I would have just brought Vasquez. her up to the, like number four. And I didn't feel like moving it. it. Why are you saying like, Vasquez? It's Vasquez. Vasquez. Potato, Decade potato, later, man. Potato, <laughs> potato. Well, you're, you're giving me Nobody shit cares. for saying Ben. <laughs> Bean. 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 De- <laughs> decades ben. after. <laughs> Decades after surviving the Nostromo incident, Ellen Ripley is sent out to reestablish contact with a terraforming terror. I can't say it. Terraforming 
colony, but finds herself battling the alien queen and her offspring. Maybe give me give me my script beforehand next time. Yeah, my bad. Well, I was going to read it, but then you were like, oh, I got this. And I'm like, oh. I thought I was supposed to do the synopsis so you, you didn't I mean, have to read can. the whole time. I just hand you the paper. I thought I'd be nice and print it out Can and read it and everything. Quit arguing over uh, do you want to read paper? part of this? You can do that if you want. I, whatever you want. Uh, I just feel bad that you got to read I the whole read time. I can read something if you guys want. You're very monotoned. <laughs> we're not trying to make people fall asleep, Eric. Well. <laughs> I mean, we, we can play. You have to have some life form. to your voice. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> you don't even talk into the mic, so I can only imagine you'd be back here like, my mic's right here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just usually facing this way when I'm talking to you. Guys. Mike's like, or Mike. Uh, <laughs> Eric's like, fuck you guys, man. <laughs> Fuck this shit. I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking done. I quit. <laughs> Madison, do you want to read some? Do you want me to? <laughs> Eric's like, God damn it. I'm just a useless piece of shit here, ain't I? I'm just a fucking visual person, ain't I? He's just here for his sexy good looks. Yeah. Look at my sexy tits. Yeah, I like them sexy titties. The dad bod. The dad, yeah, the dad bod. Do you want to read, Eric? I don't care. I was just trying to offer it for you guys. Oh, no, we're good, man. Okay. Yeah, I, I figure. I figure. Me and Karen after. are technically like the hosts, so I don't want to put people to sleep now. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, Karen, do you want? Do you want one and a half or one pages? I don't care. Uh, I just feel bad that you have to read the whole time. I tell you what, I'll read the first page and then you can read the page and a half. Okay. Does that sound cool? I don't care. I don't care either. I really don't. Good. Yeah, I do care actually. I want you to do it. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, I'll read the first part. And... <laughs> You're going to, like, stop in mid-sentence and I got to take over. Oh, good point. <laughs> uh... Wait, no, oh, look, this one ends on a full sentence. Why don't you just take the rest of that one? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, whatever. I don't care. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, fuck. I'll read Jesus the last sentence. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so from here, there's going to be heavy, heavy spoilers. If you've never seen Aliens, from 1986, do yourself a favor and go watch the movie because it is worth the watch. So, indeed. Oh yeah, maybe it. we should do our recommends. Would we watch? <laughs> we didn't even do that. <laughs> uh, We're killing course. it this week, Eric. Would you yeah. uh, rewatch and would you recommend? Uh, I'd recommend yes. Rewatch. It may be in a long time. I won't rewatch it with within the next year. Right. You know what I mean. But All right. I'd probably watch it again eventually. Madison, what about you? Yeah, I would rewatch and recommend. I'm gonna get Mikey to watch it because he's never seen it and or heard of it. He's he needs to watch the first one first. Yeah. Well duh. Okay. <laughs> <Da-doy>. <laughs> <Da-doy>. <laughs> uh Karen? Uh this is actually only my second time seeing aliens. Really? Yep. Oh wow. So oh uh, yeah, I'll rewatch and recommend. Okay. Uh I would also rewatch and recommend I have rewatched this movie. Dozens of times. Then, yeah. I've seen this movie a lot. So, I wouldn't say it's on the like scale of like how many times I've seen Terminator Two. Yeah, because I couldn't even tell you how many times I've seen that movie. But it is on the scale of like, all right, I've seen Kill Bill probably twenty or thirty times. Both of them. I bet this one is on that level of that of Kill how Bill. How many times did you watch Terminator Two? I used to I used to wear the video the cassette tape out or the videotape out when I was a kid. My mom hated Terminator 2 because of how much I oh, watched yeah, I it. Oh, yeah, you were a kid at one point yeah. in time. <laughs> <laughs> nope, I was born this way. <laughs> You're always old. Tattoos and all. <laughs> Facial hair came out of the full beard. He was hatched. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, he's like one of the face huggers. He just, ah, mom! <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> You're over here spawning demons. <laughs> well, that makes sense. <laughs> Everything makes sense to me now. All right, anyway, so from here, you heard that. That's a pretty strong recommend, I think. Uh, from here, let's go ahead and jump into that spoiler alert here. Uh, so if you haven't seen it, like I said, go check it out. We all recommend that you do. Uh, She's Madison, embarrassed now. Madison's hyperventilating. <laughs> are you okay? A part of herself. She killed a part of herself already. What's in that milk? Kate. <laughs> Breathe. Breathe. Oh I would God. like to start this today. You can go ahead. Technical difficulties. <laughs> Are you good? 
she looks high as fuck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my. I think somebody got into the gummies. <laughs> <laughs> Where are they at? <laughs> Where are you? I want to be on your level. That's what those lifesavers were. Oh. They were laced. <laughs> Joseph? <laughs> I'm glad I didn't eat it. Crap, we're all going to be tripping soon. <laughs> I had two. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you don't Eric, feel it yet? Eric's going down. <laughs> I must have a high tolerance. <laughs> I'm okay now. Cool. Okay. <laughs> All right, so anyway, let's get into this. Heavy spoilers. Uh, following the incident aboard the Nostromo, sole survivor Ellen Ripley is rescued. What are from... they doing? I don't know. Shut up. <laughs> Jesus. Are you good? <sighs> All right, sole survivor Ellen Ripley. <laughs> Jesus, man. Is rescued from her drifting shuttle by a deep salvage vessel. And sent to recuperate at Gateway Station. Sounds like a gas station. It does, don't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Upon waking, Wait, Gateway. She... You say Gateway. Gateway Station. I don't oh know. man, that everything that starts with that ends with Gateway is always bad. Yeah. Typically. Uh, upon uh, upon waking, she is devastated to learn she has been adrift in space for fifty seven years. At an uh, inquest, inquest. What? At an inquest before a panel. That was the where she went in front of those people and they blamed her for everything. Right. Yeah. What was they said? Inquest. Yeah, it's an inquest. It's it's essentially because it's within their company. It's not like at an outer outer court or whatever. It's called an inquest because it's. In. Oh, okay. New word for me today. That's cool. Uh, at an inquest before a panel of executives, her testimony regarding the alien and its role in the destruction of the Nostromo is met with extreme skepticism, as no physical evidence of the creature has been found. Ripley loses her space flight license and learns that the LV-426, uh, that LV-426, which is the planet, uh, the planetoid where the, her crew first encountered the alien eggs, is now home to a terraforming terraforming colony. So, I don't know what version you guys watched. I mean, special we've edition. watched the special mm-hmm. edition. I watched one on Stars. It wasn't special. It wasn't special. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> special. It was very normal. Was it the theatrical version? Yeah. Did yeah, you see the scene where they present, like they show her a picture of her daughter and all that? Well, no. No, okay, no. that's in the special yeah, edition. special edition, you see... Stu- you see things. You see, yeah. you see things that make it make more sense. Yeah, because she That's had a daughter. I got like a low rating on it. Yeah, she had a daughter in the original, in the first one, and in this one, it explains how her daughter grew to be sixty six, which isn't very old. Uh, She's only sixty six and passed away um, two years before she woke up. And, That's sad. Yeah, I was like, God damn, that sucks, dude. Yeah. Um, but anyway. Um, she better watch out if her daughter dies. Out. It might be genetic. Right. You notice how, like, Paul Rudd's... Or not Paul Rudd. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't in this movie, so no. you know that one guy's giving it one star. Yeah, he's giving it one star. Paul Rudd wasn't in it. Yep. Uh, what was his name? Uh, Burke? Was it Burke? Burke. Burke. Uh, Paul Reiser. Paul Reiser. Uh, Burke. He, he, he's, he was supposed to be defending her in that court, in that whole thing, and didn't say a fucking word. Hmm. Well, I mean, he shows his true colors it's later. Right he's, later on, he's a yeah. piece of shit anyway. Yeah. At first, though, he comes off to be a pretty decent character. You know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't put it in the trivia because I just kind of wanted to say it at some point since we're talking about it, since he sucks. But like, his sister actually like slapped him at the premiere when they were watching the premiere together because he was such a shit. And then when his mom finally saw the movie, she um, clapped when he died. <laughs> really? Because like, oh, they hated. Because they, they hated, hated him in the movie so much. Wow. Yeah. Smacked it. Like you <laughs> no, know, it's a movie, oh, right? Like yeah, like they were. He took his sister to the premiere because he was, you know, he's proud, and she slapped him. Right, right. <laughs> he, like when they were watching the movie, and then when his mom finally got to, to see the movie, she clapped when he died. <laughs> It's fucking great. <laughs> That's when you know you gave a good performance. Oh, right? yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, sometime later, Ripley is visited by Carter Burke, which is Paul Reiser's character, a representative from her former employer, employer 
Wayland Utani and Lieutenant Gorman of the Colonial Marines, who inform her that contact has been lost with the colony on LV-426. The company instead uh, intends to uh, dispatch Burke and a unit of Marines to investigate and offers to restore Ripley's flight status and pick up her contract if she will accompany them as a consultant. Traumatized by her previous encounter with the alien, Ripley initially refuses to become involved, but changes her mind when Burke assures her there will be no attempt to study the xenomorphs and that any creatures that they encounter will be destroyed. Uh, what they're calling the alien xenomorphs? That's what they're called is a xenomorph, yeah. Mm-hmm. Did they say that in the movie? They do in this one, but I don't. I guess they didn't in the first no, one. No, not the first. I one. know they do in this one. Lieutenant Gorman. The first time that they're said is when Lieutenant Gorman is addressing the troops. On is it the drop ship or is it before they get? I think it's before they before get they, on the yeah. before they get on the drop ship. He calls. Yeah, them it's xenomorphs. on the main vessel or whatever. They're on the main ship. Yeah, yeah. He calls them xenomorphs before they get on the drop ship, and I don't understand how they can already have a name when everybody says they don't exist and they need. I yeah, explained it. You don't believe Maybe that's just what, me. like the you know how military has funky names for everything. Maybe that was just one of their funky names. Maybe, but it, it's a little it, xenomorph is too technical of a name for something that they don't believe exists. Because any other way, they would just call it an alien. Yeah, and then pre, you know, or, like you know the next or movies, the creature or the specimen. Yeah, or whatever. like the next movies, it's even like a scientific name. Like they use oh, it they, scientifically they or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. It just kind of doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense to yeah, me. We'll get there though. Um, uh, aboard the warship Suluk, Su- Sulaco, Ripley is introduced to the, or yeah, Ripley is introduced to the Colonial Marines cur- Colonel Colonial. This this colonial is the um, uh, version that we watched. Is it the- theatrical? Because it didn't say anything about um, Newt's parents. Uh, it does sound like it's the theatrical. Yeah, I guess you're right. Because it did skip. This just skipped the entire mm-hmm. um, scene, all the scenes and stuff on the planet before they're mm-hmm. attacked. Because I know that in this one... Did you watch the scene where Newt's parents were... Well, her dad had a face hugger on him. Did no, you see that? No, because that's where he... Because remember, he when I talked about Lieutenant Gorman calling them xenomorphs, yeah. he thought that they already knew about the aliens because they were studying them he thought that they uh, were already studying i got gotcha. you okay newt's parents actually found the ship mm-hmm. they show this scene in the special edition yeah newt's parents come upon the ship just come upon it mm-hmm. and they go on it to like investigate, investigate it Which, and then they the I, parents I don't come understand back the this because has a face hugger on his face i think that one problem one plot hole i never understood about this is like you've been on this planet for 20 years colonizing it and you never saw the ship? The and only all, thing like, I can say about that is he, he said something about whatever those things are called that um, creates the atmosphere so that they can breathe. And it takes so much time to build it up that you can only, like, they had venture zones. Out so far. But even then, you're not you're telling me that they went onto a planet, they didn't, like, like completely, like, surface map? Like you're telling me they don't have satellites or anything I mean, like mapping out the entire surface of that Wayland planet. Wayland Utani seems like a really responsible company to do their homework <laughs> before sending people up there. Yeah. I, yeah, I understand stuff, why you would be concerned. But... On their stuff, their model is building better worlds. But... I don't. I can't even finish the thought. Cause... Yeah. I'm sorry, did I start talking? <laughs> well, no, because she was laughing at the. She was making a joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, they are the what the companies main goal is to find out what's going on on that ship because it, that's why they sent yeah but that's not why they would the put an entire one. colony on it well, well and I here's the thing you know, i would imagine that's why they're doing that 57 years ago all well okay 57 years later let's say all of the people that would have known about what happened on nostromo would be dead mm-hmm. and they wouldn't be able to be held accountable for what happened mm. so what that what they could have done and probably did do on paper is covered their ass so anything about that was taken care of that's why nobody knows that these things exist but meanwhile they pushed for colonists and things to go there knowing what would eventually happen yep i don't know i think that uh 
I don't know. There's some loop. There's some. There's some. There's plot a lot holes. of loopholes. In- there's a lot of plot holes in this movie, and that was one of them. Like you're like I just don't understand how they could be on a planet that had a giant <laughs> spacecraft on it. They never saw. You know, it just didn't make any sense to me. Especially but for 20 the years. only yeah, yeah, the only thing I can say here that I thought of was what he said about it, how it takes so much time to build up. Maybe, but even then, like I said, they're gonna they're gonna like they're gonna surface map that entire planet before they even land on it, before they do anything. They have to I know you they think yeah, well, they would. <laughs> they would. Because they're not gonna invest all that money into something that's just gonna be killing them or ending the world. Yeah. I don't I don't think I don't think in that maybe they would other planets. But if you've got the you know shadow guys in the background pushing for the xenomorph for that specific planet, I don't think maybe they would. that's the only thing that I could reasonably say. Maybe they were just waiting and biding their time. They knew what they, was already on. So they, they discovered that alien species. But even then, like they you're had looking to, at it, they distra- had to make it look like a mistake. I guess, you know yeah, I suppose so. so. That's the only thing I could. He you supposes know. so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jackass. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, hold on. Let me find my spot here. Okay. Aboard the warship uh, Sulo- Sulaco, Ripley introduced. Uh, R- Ripley is introduced to the Colonial Marine Squad, uh, including Sergeant Ap- Apone, 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 Colonel Hicks, and Private Privates Vasquez and Hudson. Hudson, Hudson, man. <laughs> is Hudson, your favorite. That'd be Bill Paxton. Yeah. Um, she also meets the team's android bishop, uh, toward whom she is openly hostile due to her experiences with uh, the murderous Ash aboard the Nostromo. Um, so I fucking love Lance Hendrickson in this movie. Yes. So, I love him in every movie. Yeah, I was going to say, I love him in everything. I, I just love that like they cast. So whenever they did, I don't know if anybody here has seen Near Dark. I mean, I'm sure you have. Yeah. But, like, they cast, like, three people from this movie for Near Dark. Mm-hmm. Uh, the girl who plays Vasquez uh, and then Bill Paxton and um, Lance Hendrickson were all in Near Dark. If you haven't seen Near Dark, man, such the a good movie. The girl with the short hair? Yeah. yeah Wasn't there Vasquez. still, like, only two, three chicks this time? Mm, if you include the new, pilot, there was, there's new four. Pilot, yeah. That's a little girl though. Oh I well, mean, like, yeah, and the pilot yeah. that lived for like two seconds as five. Yeah, but you're pa- you're talking about have... a squad of marines though. Yeah, no, 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 I'm not done. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> um, like in the last movie, I know we were complaining about how the only other chick didn't really play any big role. Yeah, but in this one, like Vasquez, because like one thing that not like done. okay. I'm glad the other chick actually got a bigger role in it. She stayed longer and she had more to do. She was an idiot, but... Uh, which one? Uh, the, the pilot? The short hair. The pilot. Yeah, but Vasquez is like... She's a badass in this. Yeah. Because one thing that James Cameron does is he loves making female leads, like yeah. strong female leads. He does. He loves doing that. So like, And I think... Well, Ripley was already there. She was already a strong female lead. Well, then he put in Vasquez, which was even, you know, she was like this, like, do it, you know, do it to the balls to the wall, fucking badass, you know, and that was her whole role. Honestly, I wouldn't have been surprised. Yeah, she just, she just I wouldn't have been surprised if she would have survived the whole thing instead of Hicks because she was that other strong female lead. I think that, um, believe it or not, everybody kind of gives Sigourney Weaver all this credit for who Ripley is. I would, I would throw it more. James Cameron, having oh, having sure. recently yeah, yeah. just watched Alien, and then watching this, and seeing a sl- you know this kind of she's much stronger in this yeah, one. yeah she's yeah. much stronger in this one but you also see who she used to be right in the first one but in this one there's just something a little different about her that carries on into the other movies that wasn't there in the first one she's definitely like she's more she's, of a powerful presence yes and, more yeah. Po- yeah, exactly a so, more powerful yeah. presence yes and I can see I definitely agree with that yeah more I of see a it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, she's, 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 it, she's she's after the, pretty much this movie and beyond. She's that character who's like, I've seen some shit. Yes, so yes. you know, and she's stronger because of it. Yeah, and and so. it's because what James Cameron brought that to this character for sure, in my yeah. opinion. And, and so. I love that. Like one, like I don't get me wrong, James Cameron is by far not one of the great. He's not. He's a good director, but he's not the greatest director. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people would disagree with me, and I don't give a shit. But he's not the greatest director. Um, he does good action flicks. That's it. But one thing I do love about him is um, all of his strong female leads. Like he's always got a very strong female lead. 
that yeah. doesn't rely on a man. I mean, at least for the most part. Yeah. You know, like look at the Terminator first two Terminator movies. Sarah Connor was sufficient on her own. Yeah. You know what I mean? Especially in the second one. Yeah. So, like, you got to love that about him. And mm-hmm. I do. I love it about him. Um, let's see here. Where was I? Okay. So, reaching LV-426, the heavily armed expedition descends to the surface via dropship where they find the colony damaged and seemingly abandoned. Two living xenomorph facehuggers are found in container uh, containment tanks in the medical lab. But the only colonist encountered is a traumatized young girl named, nicknamed Newt. Uh, so, all right. Why did they nickname her Newt, by the way? That's just, no, that, that was her name. Herself. She said, she said her, everybody calls her Newt except for her little brother who yeah, called her Rebecca. Why? Yeah. That's just her name. Oh, probably because she was always crawling through, like, air shafts. Because, like, I know you didn't watch this one, but, like, we watched this special version where... She was crawling through, like, they were bitching at her for always crawling through the air vents and the air, like, and all that stuff. But mm-hmm. at the, in the end, that's what saves her because yeah. she hides in them. In a um, deleted scene, I think her and her brother called it Monster Maze. It was a game. They would crawl through the vents and they called it Monster Maze. Yeah. Which, honestly, if I had to recommend which one you watch, I would say watch the special edition because it's adding some more information that wasn't in the theatrical version. Mm -hmm. So like that, you know, what kind of gives you a little bit of what was going on with the colony before the destruction. And, um, you see a little bit about what you hear more about what happened with Ripley's daughter and any, and more, in in my opinion, more backstory and more information given is always a good thing. And you really, really get to understand why, Ripley was she, the way she was with Newt. Yeah, exactly. Because that motherly what, instinct. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. you know, Wait. why it kicks in so fiercely. Yeah. In the yeah. theatrical version, you don't see how Newt and uh, Ripley meet? No, you see that, but you don't see uh, Newt with her family. Yeah. And that oh. whole segment with, like, all the colonists being alive. You don't see any of that in the... Yeah, without that. And I you don't see... some random girl that's been living yeah. there. Yeah, and he, also, like, you don't see Ripley with her daughter, with like her looking picture. at the doctor, her daughter's picture, and all that stuff in that room that she was sitting in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't see that. So you've got that mutual thing going on where you know Ripley's missing her daughter and Newt's missing her parents. So there's just like that instant yeah. bond. bond between the two of them exactly. happening. And you know, as the audience, if you didn't see those two things happen, you might go. Why are they so fierce for each other? You know right, I mean? exactly. Don't well, get me wrong. I, can, I, I mean, even, like... even, even, if was even if it wasn't a you know you didn't see that bond that because of the other things, mm-hmm. you're still going to look at it as she's going to have this motherly instinct. Sure, yeah. Or even as an adult, I mean, you're going to see a child that's in need and in, in, in need of care. Mm-hmm. You're going to jump for it. Yeah, sure. for sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, I get that. It's just kind of like it gives that another level of it, I guess. Another level to it that you didn't have before. I guess. A little background. Yeah. I agree. Uh, yeah, I think that there that there's something to be said about that. Yeah, I mean, and we're gonna get to the end of this, be- or we'll come back to all of our notes. Yeah, and stuff, because but. yeah, there's things about this movie, not about this movie, but like the follow up movie that really, <laughs> yeah, pissed me sure. off. yeah, really pissed me off. Yeah. Okay, so uh, reaching LV four two six, the heavily armed expedition descends to the surface via dropship. Where they find the colony damaged and seemingly abandoned, two living xenomorph face, I already read all this, uh, two face huggers are found in containment tanks in the medical lab, but the only colonist encountered is a traumatized young girl named nicknamed Newt. The Marines determined that the rest of the colonists are clustered in the nearby atmosphere processing station. Investigating, they find a large nest filled with the bodies of the colonists who have been cocooned to the walls and used as hosts for the xenomorphs. So, okay, let me get to this. Let me read this next part first and we can talk some more. The creatures attack, killing or capturing most of the unit. Ripley commanders, uh, Ripley, Ripley commandeers the via, uh, the group's APC and is able to rescue Hicks, Vasquez, and Hudson. With Gorman knocked unconscious during the rescue, Hicks assumes command and orders the dropship to recover the survivors, intending to return to the uh, Sulaco and destroy the colony site from orbit. So this scene would have been way cooler if it wasn't so shaky and poorly filmed. Yeah. So 
because I remember this scene being fucking awesome, and I haven't seen this movie in a few years. And watching it now, and I'm like, man, I'm like, this scene used to be so, like, I remember it being better, and it's not better. It's, like, worse watching it this time because I'm, like, trying to watch all the action going on, and it's so clustered, and everything's so zoomed up, and it's so shaky, and it's so foggy. And I understand the foggy thing. But, like, I just, I couldn't, like, I hated it. I was like, I don't like this. You know, I didn't notice it at the time, but you're right. Yeah, I just don't, I don't care for all the shakiness. Like, James Cameron was supposed to be known for making these great action movies, but this is probably one of the worst action scenes I've ever known him to film. I don't like it, and it's shaky. You don't even know who the fuck dies and how they die or anything, because they don't show most of it. Yeah. Because yeah. it's all, well, I understand the foggy and, the, and all that shit, but, like, I just, I I didn't like it, and this is probably one of the things that's really going to ding the movie for me, because it's supposed to be known for this, like, action horror aspect, and a lot of the action in this movie is not that great, and there's really not a lot of it, like, not as much as I remember there being. I remember it being more action-heavy, and it's really not. Like, there's, there's, there. don't get me wrong, there is action in this movie, but not as much as I thought, and also, like, it's very very choppy and just shaky and it's not well filmed you know i don't know if that's in part of the director i only noticed it in that scene i know the fourth aliens is like the ones that's like everybody hates but i think that one had more action than than this one did Uh, i haven't seen the fourth one in a long time yeah but in this one like not only in that scene but also in the scene where they're in the room and they have the door welded shut and they're coming in through the vents they come yeah. in through the top and everything. That scene was also very choppy and shaky, and a lot of it was you shot really up close. And you don't see a lot of the action. You barely see the xenomorphs in this movie. There's so supposed I to be hundreds of fucking xenomorphs, and you barely see them. Like at first, you see you see them at first, like crawling up, crawling yeah. up and stuff. But that's about all you see. Like the at most, a time, you probably only see like three or four. The most really action like- you seen was like right before Hudson got taken down into the you know mm. taking down you see them shooting and like going off yeah like, and that's about, about it the most you've seen i really liked that scene though where they were you know coming Calling up and through. oh that scene was, that was awesome that, I yeah, yeah i love that yeah. part but it, but that's what i'm saying like in this movie i remember seeing i remember it being like you saw a lot more of the xenomorphs like don't get me wrong they look a lot different in this movie than they did in the first one like they're more they're not like i remember in the first one like even the elongated head was smooth and you know, slimy, shiny looking. Whereas in this one, they're like, it's very dull, dull. And it's kind of like uh bony looking more, you know, things like that. They give it more. Th- that's probably one thing I liked more about the first one. There, the explanation for that uh, is that the alien and alien was only hours old. Whereas these have been able to mature. So these are older. I gotcha. Yeah. Okay. That kind of makes sense, I guess. Mm-hmm. But anyway, Is that um, trivia? yeah, That's I don't I remember if I put it in there or not, but I'm I, glad found, you told I found me. it interesting. Yeah, I'm glad yeah. you told me. Um, anyway, um, That's why I said it, because I couldn't remember if I put it in there or not. Stranded, the survivors barricade themselves inside the col- uh, colony complex. Ripley discovers that Burke unintentionally triggered the destruction of the settlement when he ordered the colonists to investigate the derelict space- spaceship where the Nostromo crew first encountered the Xenomorph eggs. Acting on the testimony she gave uh, after being rescued. Confronting him, Burke reveals that he hopes to return Xenomorph specimens to the company laboratories where he can profit from their research. Ripley threatens to expose him, but Bishop soon informs the group of a greater danger. The damaged damaged atmosphere processor has become unstable and will soon detonate with the force of a thermonuclear weapon. He volunteers to use the colony's transmitter to pilot the Sulaco's remaining dropship to the surface by remote control so that the group can escape. It's a pretty good plot point, though. Like, like... After Bishop goes into that tunnel, like, you don't hear from him for a while. And then it just shows him, like, literally, like, Mo controlling this dropship from their ship in space down to them, which is pretty badass, honestly. Dude, I had so much claustrophobia Fuck watching yeah. him in that fucking pipe. Oh, I know. He got inside that pipe. I was like, And then uh, they started, they started uh, welding. And yeah, I'm like, like, 
No. Uh, no. Only a robot no. could do that. Even, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, even if the, they did it well, then no. Like, you could just... just yeah, looking in there, I'm like, mm, no. Nope. Not, he, get, not me. Well, Lan, you know Lance Hendrickson, crawl. man. He'll he'll do anything for a good movie role. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, not me. I could. <laughs> I don't think I could do that. Nope. Uh, nope. That's that a little too tight for me. Tight. None of those things really attacked him. Like, tried to eat his face was because he was. Well, he was also like, not in he on camera he, a lot. He wasn't well, near them a lot. Like, usually, whenever the danger was coming, he was like somewhere else. You know what I mean? Yeah. So well, they were and that, and they probably knew that they weren't going to be able to actually impregnate him yeah, with, the, he, with was, he wasn't yeah i think that's what she was asking oh yeah because yeah. he's he's yeah because he's not a human i guess yeah, yeah. yeah they, sure they, they, could, they could they almost sense maybe, that's why he but, was, yeah yeah because he's not organic so yeah yeah but yeah not. so uh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> those are scientific terms i guess <laughs> yeah yeah that's all i had okay my turn yep your as germs. they await, as they await the dropship's arrival, Ripley and Newt fall asleep in the medical lab, waking to find themselves locked in the room with the two face huckers, which have been released from their tanks. Ripley is able to alert the Marines who rescue them and kill the creatures. Ripley accuses Burke of being responsible, suggesting he was attempting to have her and Newt impregnated so that he could smuggle the implanted. So <laughs> smuggle the implanted xenomorph especially since one of them's nine yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah embryos past earth's quarantine the marines elect to execute burke for his treachery but before they can act the electricity is suddenly cut off and multiple xenomorphs attack through the ceiling gorman hudson vasqua vasquez and burke are killed or captured during the battle ripley and hicks briefly manage to escape with newt but the little girl is taken away when they encounter more xenomorphs while hicks is seriously wounded Ripley gets Hicks to the second dropship, but refuses to leave Newt behind. She assembles a pulse rifle slash flamethrower combination weapon before heading into the hive in the processing station to rescue Newt. She finds her before she can be impregnated, but the two then encounter the huge xenomorph queen in her egg chamber. Ripley destroys the eggs, enraging the queen who tears herself loose from her enormous ovipositor <laughs> and gives chase through the failing processor station. Ripley and Newt rendezvous with Bishop and Hicks in the dropship and escape moments before the colony is consumed by the nuclear blast. Back on the Saluka, Sal, Salako? Is that how it's? Salako. I don't know. Salako. Salako. Ripley, Salako. Yeah, Ripley and Bishop's relief at their narrow escape is interrupted when the Xenomorph Queen, stowed away in the dropship's landing gear, impales Bishop and tears him in half. The Queen advocates, if, advocates advances on Newt. But Ripley intervenes and battles her using an, ex an exosuit cargo loader. The two of them tumble into a large airlock, when Ripley, which Ripley then opens, expelling the queen into space. Ripley, bar Ripley barely clambers to safety, while Bishop saves Newt from being sucked out after the queen, earning Ripley's ad admiration. Afterward, Ripley helps Hicks and Bishop into hypersleep before she and Newt bed down for the return journey to Earth. I blame Bishop. The death end. On... Damn, you sped right through that no, shit. I, I blame... <laughs> like nobody's interrupted me. I'm getting through I'm it. I'm going. <laughs> I blame Bishop's death on Ripley. She should have seen that one coming. I mean, it happened the first time. Who's to say when it happened the second time? Right. Bishop um, didn't die though. No. I mean, like him getting ripped in half. I blame that on her. Mm, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go. Let's go through some notes here. Um, All right. So the first one I have is like, like especially like you didn't watch the special edition, but. Um, the the scenes with them on the planet, like driving those machines around, dude, totally Terminator vibes. Oh, absolutely, Terminator I, vibes, one hundred percent. I agree. So like, I was like, I was like Terminator. I was like, these vehicles, the landmass, everything looks like even the sounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. My note, I got like three three actors in here that's came in cross came across Predators, Aliens, and Terminators. I only know Bo Paxton. No, Bill Paxton, Bill Paxton died, died uh, by all Vasquez. three. Vasquez. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, he died by all three. Yeah, Vasquez. Vas yeah, she, yeah was, she was. She was the mom. Foster in, mom. And she was Terminator the foster two. mom in Terminator okay, Two. Okay, so she died by uh, alien. And by a T one. Spoiler and a alert. You got uh, Hicks. Yeah, yeah Hicks. But, but he's then, only two, not all three. And then Bishop. Yeah. Well, no, he's only faced two. No, Bishop. He died in. Aliens vs. Predators by the Predator. That doesn't count. That doesn't count. Come on. That doesn't count. And the crossovers still, don't count in either. Hey, he got killed by a Predator. Wait, what about Hicks? Yeah, Hicks didn't fight the Predator. I yeah, thought you were just talking about... No, but Hick, Hicks 
No, I didn't say all three. I say they. Well, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of across, there's a lot of crossovers. You know? Yeah. And Hicks, he got killed by a Terminator, but survived an alien. You got Bishop that's died by a Predator and an alien. You got uh, Hudson was killed by all three. <laughs> poor, and poor Bill Paxton. Vasquez died by two of them. Mm-hmm. Trying to think of who else. How did Bill Paxton die in this movie again? Uh, he got taken down through the floor by the aliens. Yeah. They killed him. Oh, did they? Yeah. No. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I think that's it, as far as I can remember. Anyway. Um, I like how he plays Bishop in both. the This one, and he played Bishop again in Aliens vs. Predator. Well, no, he played uh, Wayland, didn't he? I thought he played uh, he played Wayland. Nope, Bishop. I've never seen it. I looked it up. Predator. I could have swore he played Wayland or something like that. He was like the company owner. Or no, that was Alien 3, wasn't it? Where he came in, where... <laughs> I haven't seen 3 in so remember. long. Let's see, where's the cast? Do you want a joke while we're waiting? What? You want a joke while we're waiting for him to find whatever he's on his phone? Sure, Madison. What's your joke? Okay, so in the first movie, you know how the acid didn't really kill anybody or harm anybody? Hmm. I'm glad that in this one it had such a killer role. Lance Henriksen, Bishop. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Lance Henriksen, Bishop, Aliens vs. Predator cast. Oh, well, maybe I'm maybe I'm thinking of him. In, maybe he played Wayland in the third one. He may be. Because he was in the third one. I have only seen the third one, I think, even once. I think I've seen it twice, and both times I hated it. Yeah. So I think that's why I've only seen it once. Maybe I need to go back and rewatch it this Did time with a well, reviewing eye. Uh, so could he have been playing the Wayland in um, what the hell is that one called? Where they go back and like show the uh, the creator. No, that mm-hmm. no, because he was played by um, Wayland was played by uh, damn it, I can't remember his name. He was in Memento. Okay. Um, I can't remember his name. He was in Memento. You know There's a lot about? of people in there. The main it, character. Now, oh. His name could be Bishop Whalen in yeah. Alien vs. Predator, but it's his cast says Bishop. I don't remember. Oh, I don't know then. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, oh. yeah, I said Burke is a fucker. <laughs> Burke is a fucker. I said Burke is a piece of, piece of shit. <laughs> okay, so whenever Newt falls down into the into the water or down into the air system and she's got the jacket on why the fuck didn't you stay in the jacket like they had a hold of her she's like oh and i fell out of the jacket (laughs) because they needed and i'm like dude just grab the jacket why are you what you're not even fucking sliding down that fast she didn't fall down then they wouldn't have had a plot point to go and get her still that was very poorly executed i understand she's like like, oh she she's nine and you know she hasn't ate in a while so she's probably pretty you know like muscle you know yeah but she literally went like this instead of like keeping her arms down like she should have she just went whoops gotta come get me <laughs> fucking idiot <laughs> uh, okay so this was my biggest problem at the very beginning though we, we kind of talked about it but lieutenant gorman calls them xenomorphs when he's telling them about the mission. So they don't exist per the company, but they gave them a name. Like, they have to have Ripley go up there and tell them about these aliens because she knows the most about them and all of that. Well, well just saying what it comes back to is uh, is they might have known that the Xenomorphs were there because... I'm saying nobody the called them out on their okay. bullshit. So here, here's here's right. Here's, I get here's that. another way. Here's another way. So after that meeting that they had, maybe the company came up with a name for the alien to call them that when they encounter. If they yeah, but they definitely them. negated. It was like no, these don't exist. I like know, you're making I'm, shit up. I'm saying well, no. maybe they came up with an I. You know, well we'll give it a name just in case they come across it. So that way they have something to call it when they. The only thing encounter. that they knew was that the colonists that they had lost communication with the colonists but it had happened before they even said that that there was satellites that went down and it had happened before okay but what i'm saying is after they had that meeting they took they have to they came up with a name for that alien just in case they encountered it that's weak 
I'm just saying. That's weak. There's a few weak if, things about if this I, movie. If I was Sigourney Weaver, if I was Ellen Ripley, and I'm sitting there, and he said Xenomorphs, I'd be like, excuse me? What are they called? <laughs> what, what, what was that? Yeah, what, they have a, they have a name, but they I lost my license, yeah, and I'm a, here to get my license so this back. Thing that, but they have uh, a name doesn't exist that I lost my license over. It has a fucking name. Yeah, but I don't have a job. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm here to get my job back. What what was that? <laughs> can you can we roll the tape back? <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, oh shit, where was I? I was gonna say something here. Hold on. Oh, there was one scene I was kind of struck by. Uh, when they find the face huggers in that in the medical lab, the very when they first get there and they first see them, and um, Ripley's standing in the doorway and she's kind of leaning into the doorway, and you can kind of see like she's just kind of horrified, like she's got this just terrified, horrified look on her face, and um, Hicks kind of barely touches her arm, just kind of just very gracefully barely touches her arm, just to let her know he's he's there because he knows that she's terrified, you know. And he just barely grazes her arm, but that barely graze just set her off. She just almost comes out of her skin. But at the same time, she's um, comforted by his presence. And you could see all of that happening between the two of them with no words spoken at all. I just really like the scene. Did they get together in the second one? We don't need to talk about that right now. (laughs) <laughs> we'll, we'll come to that. Yeah. Anyway, I really liked that scene. I thought it was beautiful. Uh, so, um, the the scene with uh, between her and the queen was pretty awesome. Yeah. So, like the part where she's like standing there and she's like walking back, it was a uh, one of those like old west who draws like, first moments. Mm-hmm. Like, like, like if you do it, I'm gonna do it. Just saying, mm-hmm. like, don't make a move. Mm-hmm. And she, and she makes that move. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. I love that scene. That that part was so cool to me. Absolutely. Um, the queen is like badass, though. I love seeing the queen in this. Like the part where, like the whole the, the one thing I do. Okay, so obviously they were setting up that she can run these, like she can pilot these stupid mech suits or whatever, which obviously resemble have a lot to do with what they look like in Avatar because they look so much so similar. Yeah. Um. But uh. So. In this though, like whenever she gets in it and like it's like set up and ready to go, she goes, "Where do you want it?" I'm just kind of like, "Gay," because <laughs> I'm like, "You're telling me that nobody can run these? You have to be licensed to do this? Like these things look simple as fuck. Like you literally walk like a mech suit, and you like it's got controls like a forklift. Can't be that hard. I've driven forklifts before. It takes about two minutes to learn." So I, I well, if, if I learned anything about futuristic movies, is that blue collar is the new smart, and and the future is in the future. True, but also like the 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 giggling between Hicks and his like, uh, <laughs> I thought that was so. Oh, they're like, <laughs> yeah, like, I was like, why are they laughing? Yeah, about like that? like it's so you know like oh my god, she knows what she's doing. Yeah. She's a girl though, <laughs> but she's like, a girl. Yeah, yeah. I'm like how fucking dumb. And it was the only time you see Hicks really laugh, and it was so weird and just yeah, it's awkward. I agree, it's awkward. I just didn't like that scene. I'm like, I'm dumb and cheesy. Why are the coffee cups so small? Did anybody? I don't know. They're they were really tiny. They were very. They tiny. were like small, like that big. Every time somebody would walk in, I'm like, why are they so? They're espressos. They're little. They were. They were like this tall. Yeah, like that tall. They're like, like baby what? cups. They're like they're like three what's, inches what's tall. A, not even. Uh, uh, it's comedian. Fluffy he talks about oh. he, got, he got a a shot of espresso from espresso from like a Colombian shot. It's like this big. He's like, that's not going to do anything for me. He's like, and they told him, he's like, I want a full coffee cup with it. He's like, that was the worst mistake I ever made. <laughs> <laughs> um, so maybe maybe those little coffee cups are the espressos from Colombia. Maybe it's, it's just very tiny. So. Did anybody else notice that like James Cameron really likes his lightning effects? Yeah, yeah, yeah in this movie, yeah, Cause, well, because you Terminator, see him in both the yeah. Terminator movies, and then yeah. you see him in this movie, and they're like just electricity Random. randomly running up walls, well, and maybe, like why? <laughs> maybe that was uh, you know his Michael Bay era instead of maybe yeah, like that was his was, thing. Like yeah. if it ain't got electrical effects in it, it's yeah. not a James Cameron. Yeah, movie. I gotta have that. Yeah, I gotta have some electrical effects. <laughs> Did you notice the uh, acid? Like one dude when they're getting into that AP, yeah, fuck, 
APC. Yeah. When they're all getting into the APC and that acid gets on that guy's face. The practical effects on that one's pretty good. That was pretty good. And it sucks you don't get to see more of that. Like Yeah. Like you you you, you gotta appreciate the practical effects, but you also are like but I want to see more. Like, don't just like show it for a split second and then cut away. Like, yeah. show more of it. Yeah. yeah, it's already an R rating, dude. Let's see it. Yeah. I want to see it eat his fucking face. Yeah, you know. So, so like in the scene where they were taking all of their rounds and everything, he takes all of the rounds and everything, and and you know tells Vasquez, you know, sternly give it to me. But then, like, her and him are walking around like their guns are still loaded. As if they're still loaded. And they are. He, I know they are. Oh. But they're not supposed to be. Right. Like, if my gun isn't loaded anymore, I'm not going to be like... Holding it like it is loaded. <laughs> you know, and nobody's... Like, especially a pwn, well, a pwn, a pwn, isn't going... Why are you holding your gun like that? No, because you know? I thought I thought after they handed them the magazines, the dude like grabbed out more magazines. It was like here, and he was like, take she it did. Yeah, he did. Yeah. So they were walking around with them loaded, even though they weren't supposed to be loaded. I didn't understand oh, the magazines. Okay. Like, how do those work? Because they're like these, like those were like pulse. Were they? Yeah, I think okay. those were like pulse. So there was like some kind of pulse generator yeah, or, something. or something like that. Okay, that makes sense. Because yeah. I was like, is it shooting round? What the fuck? I don't know. Um, so the part, like, back to the practical effects thing, like that part where Bishop gets ripped thing. in half, dude, is fucking baller. That, yes. I that, think I that did. That practical I, effect is so cool. I think I put in here how they did it because I was, like, floored by it. Bishop. Yeah, like, the way, the way like, she rips him in half, like, picks him up and everything and, like, just see his body go flying. And you're like, dude, if Amazing. only that was a real person <laughs> instead of a robot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want to see the gore. I want to see the gore, man. Like... It was well, it was really cool. You, you seen the creamy chicken Alfredo gore? That's pretty much what it looked like. Yeah. That's what it yeah. It always looks like milk. Yeah, like pasta. Milk, yeah, pasta. Yeah. Not pasta and milk. <laughs> They're gonna ruin pasta for me forever. Why wouldn't they tell them that they couldn't fire down there? Like why, why they did couldn't? They tell them? Oh, why because didn't they tell they them? Wouldn't. Right. Like why wouldn't they tell them why they couldn't? Yeah, they were because, like, why though? Because that yeah. colonel was a dumbass. But. Yeah, I guess, but Ripley didn't tell him to, or he, nobody nobody said like, why don't you tell him? Or you know, I don't know. I would tell him. I, I really don't. Yeah, know, you man. think you so? Know? But yeah, I mean, if I know that you know, like I'm gonna blow this place into the next realm, if I fire this weapon, then I'm not going to. <laughs> you know what I mean? True. <laughs> anyway. Uh... That's all the notes that I have. Uh, do you guys still got any? Yeah, I got a few. So uh, this really made me laugh while we were watching it. Jeremiah said that Elon Musk got his idea for the Cybertruck from the APC. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it kind of looked like. <laughs> That's the, yeah, it does. It does yeah, it looks, the Cybertruck does look like yeah. Uh, before that thing went nuclear, I wrote down Maybe how. Maybe Elon Musk is Wayland. I mean. Oh, fuck. oh no! Oh, he's, he is there's trying evidence to colonize there. Mars. Yeah, there is plenty of evidence there. There's a, there's a Don't kill us. I could see him being a huge alien fan and, and like wearing a Whalen Utani shirt, just for fun. He should. I, I wear a Whalen Utani. Yeah, shirt but you're not a fucking millionaire either. either so, yeah. with Elon, a lot of money and a lot of tech. Shirt. Um. Yeah, how confident do you have to be in your tech to not bring suits? Like nothing is gonna you know stop that thing from operating and making the air unbreathable right like even before it went nuclear like what else could go wrong with it nobody is bringing suits ever like that's not a thing there. i love no. that yeah, i love that this thing is just now you don't, i love that this thing just it. happens to be going nuclear as they get there yeah well didn't they say something about it had something to do with the attack or something oh maybe possibly they, there was a reason. I, th- I think I'm I pretty not, sure they if gave it, a reason. If they did, I didn't catch it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they gave it a reason. Um, <laughs> their trust in elevators in, in this time just killed me. <laughs> I'm I, nobody yeah. trusts elevators when you know a fire alarm's going off. You know, in during a test, let alone like there's fire and brimstone everywhere yeah. and everybody's like yeah we'll, we'll take is, the elevator planet is literally about to explode and you're like gonna hop on the elevator. yeah i'll like, take the elevator earthquakes and shit like nah we're good i already have my cardio today <laughs> <laughs> did anybody else feel like the ending was a little bit on par with part one yeah like with the explosion probably get out of there describe. time and yeah and the alien yeah. being on board with them and you know 
getting sucked through the airlock instead of another dying another right way yeah for the, the, the explosion get... behind you yeah. then oh wait it's uh the queen is actually on the ship with you mm-hmm. yeah there's a lot of similar similarities there mm-hmm. a few yeah. and then getting you know getting in the ship and peacefully going to sleep and waiting for someone to the find next you. movie yeah. <laughs> yep mm-hmm. so this movie's cool until the end because you're like if you've seen the third one it pisses you off. It does. It, it really, really does. Really, it pisses really, you off. really does. Well, I've never seen it. We're going to. We're going to. I'm Eventually. Not, I haven't seen it yet. I'm not angry right now. I'm not going to give anything away. We're not going to say anything about it, but it does piss you off. Uh, so that's everybody cover all their notes. Yeah. Yep. All right. Cool. Uh, let's get into uh, rating this motherfucker. Let's rock out this bitch. Oh, uh, let's start with Madison. Madison, what do you think about Aliens from 1986? I liked it. It was, uh, you're right, in a lot of ways, it had like the same effects as the Tor- Terminator and stuff. It reminded me a lot of the Terminator, the first one. Um, but I liked it. Yeah, I don't know what I rate it, though. Not yet. I'm thinking in my mind as I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it a... Uh, what did I rate the last one? I don't know. Well, I gotta rate it higher than that one. <laughs> the last movie? Yeah. 6.5. Yeah, 6. I did? Yeah. I was gonna give it a 7.5. A 6.5? No, she gave the movie last week a 6.5. Yeah. That's what she was saying. No, she's oh. talking about the last Alien movie. Oh, the last Alien movie? Well, that was an 8. Give it an 8.5. Because I do like it more than the last movie. But. Okay. Okay. Uh, Eric, what do you think, man? So, uh, I like the nostalgia to it. I've watched it before multiple times. So, it still has that nostalgia effect to me. Practical effects. I like how they practical. Even though they were short, there were some good practical effects. Uh, Cons on it, you know, some of the actors, the dialogue form was not something I enjoyed. Uh, Mostly, what was it? Who was it? Hudson. He was just—he was killing it. Yeah. yeah. Hey Vasquez, has you ever been confused or confused for a man? Uh, I, no, <laughs> no. Have, have you? you? <laughs> what killed me for Hudson though was like how he just became a whiny bitch. <laughs> it killed me. I was like, game man. over, man. Yeah. Game I was like, shut over. up, man. <laughs> but so some of the dialogue wasn't the greatest for me. Um, some of the camera angles wasn't too fond of a lot of the camera angles that were on in the movie. So I gave it a 7 out of 10. Still up there, but I couldn't give it an 8. Okay. Karen? Um, I think the strongest point that this movie has for me is that it created the Ripley character as we know her. Yeah. Um, so I give James Cameron a lot of credit for that. Um, I really was not a fan of the score in this movie, like at all. It wasn't near as good as the yeah, first one. No, it didn't bring bring anything to Mm-mm. the movie at all. I agree. It was very forgettable. I was actually gonna, was score. I was actually going to add that in my review too. Yeah, yeah. very forgettable. Very, yeah. you know, especially when the first one did such a good job. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Um, the ending. Yeah, you should do better. Uh, not the same yeah not the same um i really really like the bishop character um i liked so much of the characters and i really liked certain things about the story i can't i liked where it took wayland yutani as the company and kind of made the company a bad guy even more so than the first one did and you got to because, see a little bit of the company you know, too. yeah because like in the first one it was more like people within the company were the bad guy but now it's like the company itself as, a, as an entity is a bad guy. Because no matter who's working there, whoever's doing this, they're all on board as being assholes. Right. You know? Yeah. You know, like, come it's like it's like in the interview process. Like, are you a piece of shit? Well, my mom told me that I was kind of a prick. You're hired. Exactly. <laughs> Going back to the ending, uh, you know, I think all the alien movies do it. 
the same kind of ending. They all have a fight se- se- sequence on the escape ship with the last alien. Not the third one. Not the third one? Mm-hmm. I, might, well, yeah. I know Resurrection did. Uh, yeah, but they don't human, go to sleep for that one. one. They don't, I they guess, don't, they don't go to I guess sleep for I'm that just one, saying though. James Cameron should do better. Yeah, oh, I'm not, I'm not, this, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, in my, you know, coming back to the thought process of, I thought yeah. all alien movies did that. Oh, I don't know. Um, Maybe it was just an alien aspect. Yeah. There was a lot of things to like about it. I like the, the Newton Ripley thing, and I liked... I, there's just so many things to like, but a lot of things not to like. Yeah. Right. So I, yeah. I, man, it's really hard to rate this because it is a classic. That's why I say nostalgia but it's not, comes it's into not, effect for me. It's not wonderful. So, uh, I'll I'll say seven. I'll come in at a seven with Eric. Okay. Uh, I think for me, I've got a lot of issues with this movie because I wanted it to be more. Than I've yeah. got a lot of issues with this movie because um, it the first one set such a high bar. Um, the score was better. The atmosphere, like the, the overall dread and atmosphere of the no, first movie. It's a 6.5. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Is it because of the atmosphere thing? <laughs> I just kept thinking about it. Yeah. Um, so like the first one, like this one did a lot of things that the first one did way better. The atmosphere, the dread. Granted, I know this is like an action movie, and I'm not going to ding it too hard because of that reason. But dude, the score for the first one was so good, and this one just like didn't didn't break any new ground. You know, it didn't do anything new or fresh yeah. or anything really rememberable. Well, that so. was the, that was another thing I was going to say is that this one is more of an action movie, and the first one was more of a horror movie. Yeah, but I like the horror aspect more. Right. For like, something like this, yeah, and I get I get it, man, because this this movie set the groundwork for what the alien franchise would become video games for the aliens. Uh, it even set up the whole action horror thing with alien versus predator. There's a lot of things that this movie set up for that franchise. Cause it started out as just a straight up horror movie and they turned it into an action horror franchise. Right. So with this movie and James Cameron did that. Yep. So, I mean, for that, I mean, I guess I'll give him credit for that reason, but I liked it more as a horror movie. I agree. I liked it as like this, trapped in space secluded like with an alien a killer alien type deal claustrophobic kind of movie. yeah it was know. it was it was dreadful and you yeah. never knew it was going to happen or what was around every corner mm-hmm. i like that but it's cool that you know like it would be cooler if there was more inner like face-to-face interaction between the humans and the aliens instead of them just trying to pile into a room to get to these humans and they're just getting blasted away by gunfire it doesn't make for a very. Uh, it makes it entertaining, but is it, do- it doesn't make it doesn't give it a lot of depth. I guess it doesn't make it uh, as entertaining as it could be. It's just a bunch like these aliens are essentially just cannon fodder. Yeah, you know, yeah. taking bullets, bullets, bullets. And for that reason, like it's just it's in, like I said, a lot of the action scenes, it's just they're so jumbled together and shaky and blurry, and it just doesn't make it that much fun to watch. I yeah. mean. And I noticed that watching it this time. It was more fun as a kid, I think, to watch. Um, but there's a lot of things about this movie that, like, the plot holes. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of things about this movie that I just don't care for. But there's a lot of things that I do love about it. You know, this practical effects. Um, the special edition made things so much better. Um, I do love the relationship between Newt and all that. And I also love the relationship between uh, Hicks and, and Ripley. I love Hudson. I love all the Marines, honestly. I think the whole Marine thing is really cool. I think it's awesome. Um, and that's another thing that was really opened up, and especially v- the video game aspect world of the Alien franchise um, with the Marines and things like that. They brought that in. Um, I think that the Alien design in this is pretty cool. Um, I loved the Queen, and I love the battle between her and the Queen. That's the best part of the whole Absol- movie. Yeah, that, that whole is the best. Thing. That whole yeah, fight is the best part of the whole movie. It's just like, too slow. It's very slow, but it's also, like I said, that thing where the face-to-face yeah. combat sort of thing. Um, so that's awesome. But Abed and Troy did it better. <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm going to come in here, and I'm, I'm going to say I'll give it a, I'll give it a 7.5, I guess. Um, 
I was going to go lower, but the more I thought about it, I was like, no, because there are a lot of things that I do love about this movie. I was going to say, I thought you liked this one more than the first one. I'm, I'm going to have to say I don't. You don't? I don't. Watching it this time, I'm like, I think I like the first one more. Like, I love the first one. The first one was just good. It's just a good, atmospheric sort of horror movie, and, it, and they do a good job. But that's Ridley Scott, man. He's just, he's a fucking king. He's good. He's good at what he does. Yeah. He's good at creating that sort of dread in that in that atmosphere in his movies with like his cinematography, his his music and all the things that he chooses to do mm -hmm. uh theatrically. He's good him. at giving you what he he's a, he's seeing in his yeah, head. Exactly. And I think he does a great him. job. Yeah. And he does a great job, man. So I'm gonna have to say, yeah, seven point five. I love the first one a lot more than this one, so Yeah. I think I realized that watching this time this this one this time around too. So that gives our aggregate as a 7.4. That's not terrible, though. Mm -mm. Not at all. I know that this one is the more liked of the of all the movies. It is. It's, like, the best one. So I kind of had, like, high hopes not remembering it very well. Yeah. Because I remember it being a lot more I fun. mean, don't get me wrong. I don't hate the movie. There was a lot I liked. It's just I like the first one better. And I, I remember I agree, this yeah. one with more I think as you get older, maybe you find... Uh, find more to like in movies like the first one like the first one's more there's more to like there because you're like i'm not you know action movies are fun and everything but when it comes down to it you're looking for just a good entertaining movie well i think it's a movie that can put you in that state i think it's for me it's because the first one was a horror movie and i'm set up for that like right that one was a horror movie and it was horrifying so then you come around and you're watching aliens and like i know it's not a horror movie already but since the first one was such a good horror movie, I'm like, You're still I'm a little let down. I think, I yeah, think I'm a that little if, let down that I'm not. I think that if James Cameron would have had more of an opportunity to make more this movie more of a spectacle, because that's where he shines mm -hmm. with his movies is like spectacle. With Terminator 2, the Avatar movies, you know, all that stuff. It's He's all about like the visuals. What can I show you that you haven't seen before? How can I make this more visually stimulating? You know, that's what he does with his movies. Whereas Ridley Scott's more about like that feeling, that dread, that sense, you know, it's building mm -hmm. this atmosphere for you. Yes. But like James Cameron's like, I want to make this fun and I'm going to make this, you know, explosive and, and, and you're going to see some cool shit. And in this movie, he kind of fails at it because yeah. it's dark. It's, yeah. you know, like there's some cool scenes in it. Well, I mean, it's in, it's in space. So you've got to build the atmosphere. Did you, you, guys... you can't rely on visuals. Yeah. And that he's also working with a property that was already created. Yeah. Yeah. So he wasn't able to really just take it and run with it. Yeah. That's so. true. Did you guys see, like, did you guys watch after the credits? Mm, no. The, the trivia thing. Oh, the thing at the end of the, after the credits? No. That was weird. It was like the THX. Uh, it was one of the symbol. Companies. It was so fucking weird. It was a THX symbol, and it was like all these weird flowers and trippy shit before it like turned into the THX. You know what the THX yeah. symbol is, yeah. right? It turned into that. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> it was just after the movie and after the credits, or was it before the credits? It was after the credits. Oh, it was so weird. I was like, what the fuck? It was like it was all so these trippy. Flowers. Like if you get a chance, because you've got it on Blu-ray, you've got it on Blu-ray. Watch Did she this. Give you a lifesaver before you. No. Start? Okay. <laughs> no. But that would have made it a lot cooler. <laughs> but yeah, it was just it was it was fucking true. If you get a chance, go home and like watch it after the credits. Watch the THX symbol. Okay. And it's so like trippy and weird. Like what the fuck? It's like these weird <laughs> flowers and all kinds of shit. It's like weird alienated. Like not like the alien movie. <laughs> Like you, would, I was thinking, well, maybe it's got some. No, it doesn't. It's just weird. It's like flowers and shit. It's like flowers <laughs> it's like, and all kinds of weird shit. It's supposed to make you feel better after watching the movie. You're like, oh, flowers. No, <laughs> no, no. no it's actually kind of weird and freaky. Like, it was the fuck? freaky. It was like moving and forming into other things. Before it wasn't like, like old school, like seventies trippy flower transforms into <laughs> like another flower or something. It was weirder than that. It was like, yeah, some alien type shit. Not mm. like Alien, the movie we just watched, but like. Just some weird out of world shit. Yeah. It, was yeah, it was weird. Anyway, let's get into some rotten tomatoes. Okay. <laughs> I have like a bunch of messages. Yeah, my phone keep blowing up too. Is it people from the podcast by any chance? No, it's Crystal. Oh. <laughs> Somebody trying to call us? Uh, no. Nope. Just don't know. Nobody doing that yet. <laughs> um. Can you see it? 
Madison. In the reflection. No. I can't, I swear. (laughs) Look. (laughs) Madison. I'm not good at making eye contact. (laughs) You know that. I'm good at staring at people who don't stare back, though. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless it's Gavin, then I'll stare at him until he looks away, because it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just be like... You bully. We'll be eating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then he'll be like... <laughs> the fuck you staring at? <laughs> fuck, leave me he alone. He won't say that either. He'll just stare back at me until finally he's like... <clears throat> Gets uncomfortable with it. (laughs) (laughs) He'll get uncomfortable and look away and keep eating his food. (laughs) All right. Uh, Yeah. So let's go ahead and get into this. What do you guys think the uh, um, critic review is? The critic. The critic. 78. 87. 74. What did you guys say? 74. 87. 78. McCarran's going to take this 98%. 98, really? They're, it's James Cameron they're going to suck his dick. Oh, yeah, Jim Cam. Yeah, yeah they're going to they're gonna suck that that Cam dick. Uh, yeah, 98%. Um, so, yeah, that's ridiculous. That's it way It is ridiculous. <laughs> maybe we're just assholes. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Game over, man. Don't get me wrong. It's a good movie. <laughs> it's just yeah. not as good as the first one. Uh, all right, so what do you guys think about the 88. audience score? No, oh, they suck his dick too. It's ninety three. Uh, I would say that. I'd say probably maybe eighty. It's ninety four percent. Really? Ninety four percent. Oh yeah. Ninety four. She said ninety three. Oh. No, that was One that was close. It was very close. You'd be surprised. Some of these movies you're like, oh, that movie had to be panned. Like, no, dude. They like, especially old movies, nostalgic movies like that. Like, yeah, they. They eat that shit up. I can't say anything. I beat Karen both times last week, so. Yeah. Did you cheat? No. Are you sure? Yeah. Did she say you had cheated? Mm-hmm. Game over, man. What do you guys do? Yeah, she cheated. Oh, uh, okay. Let's, I, we're probably not going to find... One bad review. Very many bad reviews. Well, there's got to be the Paul, the Paul Rudd. The yeah. Paul Rudd one. The Paul there. Rudd one? Yeah, Paul Rudd wasn't in it. Okay, yeah, here's a, a one, one star. There's a half a star. Ooh. Okay, and this one actually... All right, hold on. This is good. Took everything interesting about the original and threw it out. Instead of creative of a creative and suspenseful sci-fi, it's a guns-blazing generic action film with sci-fi trappings. It's not good. It's no good. Okay, he had a good yeah, reason. Yeah, he has his reason. Solid, yeah, he's got his yeah. reason for not liking it. Yeah. So I'll give him that much. That's pretty much what we just said about it too. Was that pretty right? much? Yeah. But we don't hate the action. We part don't of hate it the either. action, right? Yeah, I don't hate the action part of it. I just, I just prefer. Like it. But the that's. I think that's why I liked seeing Prometheus so much because, like, yeah. the more and more I fucking soaked it in, yeah. I'm like, man, it's just such a good movie because it was back with Ridley Scott yep. and it kind of, it brought back that dread. It wasn't a fucking action movie. It was a movie that, like, built on that dread and that, mm-hmm. and that atmosphere and that's what I loved about it. It was just a all-around good, suspenseful movie like that. I am seeing four and five stars. Keep going. <laughs> no, I won't catch it. We'll end up knocking I'll something. Slap down. it away. <laughs> I don't need any more of your hippie drugs. Eric, I'm gonna toss this to you. Can you hand it to her? I feel like something's gonna get broken. Okay, I found another half Let's star. It, yeah, it's okay, hard. I got another purple one. Yes. <laughs> I found another half. I found another half star. I'm ready. Uh, Half star, another one. Oh no, it's a dumb eighties action film. Please go back to Pandora, James Cameron. And uh summation or in summation, this guy stinks. How can you say go back to Pandora? Simpletons Pandora didn't will exist, enjoy then. this horse manure. That's true, like this is before Pandora. Yeah. So I don't know why he would say that. Madison, stop. Stop. You fucking crack it. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you guys owe me um, uh, five dollars a pound. Jesus Christ! You guys have the friendly discount. I didn't even open it yet. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, 
<laughs> you can have it back. <laughs> all right, here's a two star. After all these years, it's abundantly clear that the original movie should have been its only outing, as each follow up has diluted the premise into utter nonsense. The gung ho army action is insane at best. The Vasquez character is awful, but she's not alone in being badly portrayed. Uh, at times, it actually tries to be Kubrick, Kubrick, Kubrickian in delivery and fails miserably. Give it a uh, <laughs> give it a miss. A Kubrickian? Like, I was gonna ask. How, how do you get Kubrick? I was out gonna of ask this? the same thing. Yeah, how I do you got get no Kubrickian no, vibes out of this movie. Anyone else? Kubrick, Kubrick, uh-uh. Kubrickian. Kubrickian. Okay. Kubrickian. The only thing that it had in common was that there was Marines in it. Yeah, Marines maybe, or and maybe made... he's talking about the Hudson character, how he was just kind of like off the rails. But even then, he wasn't like he still wasn't so off the rails that he was like trying to kill his own guys. Anyway, that's all I'm going to do for that, Karen. Yeah. Let's get into some goddamn trivia. Holy crap! There's a lot. Sweet ass trivia with Karen. When filming the scene with Newt in the duct, Carrie Hen kept deliberately blowing her scene so she could slide down the vent, which she <laughs> later called a slide three stories tall. James Cameron finally dissuaded her by saying that if she completed the shot, she could play on it as much as she wanted. She did, and he kept his promise. Bill Paxton continuously apologized to Carrie Hen throughout filming every time Hudson had to swear in front of her. Carrie later admitted that she didn't mind, mainly because she really didn't know what any of the words meant. Little girl. No. Mine's scary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the knife trick scene was originally going to be done by Bishop alone. According to Lance Henriksen, he suggested to James Cameron to have Hudson's hand put on top of his, to which Cameron agreed as Henriksen felt the scene needed something ex- extra. This change was discussed with almost everyone except Bill Paxton. Yeah. <laughs> Henriksen. Yeah, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> Henriksen also remembers a long night of drinking after shooting this scene, followed by a reshoot of the scene, as it looked too fake when they sped the footage up. He accidentally caught Paxton's pinky with the knife on this reshoot. Sigourney Weaver had several notes for James Cameron after having read the script. Although he could not grant all her requests, Cameron praised her for never taking issue with the direction he wanted to take with the story. Her notes were all about how she felt Ripley should respond to her situations, which he was happy to accommodate. James Cameron had uh, faced a big problem trying to win the confidence and respect of the British crew, many of whom had worked on Alien in 1979 and were force- fiercely loyal to Ridley Scott. In order to try and convince them he had the talent and the skills for the job, he arranged a screening of the Terminator for the crew on the set to demonstrate his abilities. However, most of the crew ignored the invite and didn't bother to turn up. According to Bill Paxton, he improvised many of his lines, including the game over man game over (laughs) his famous line. We're on an express elevator to hell going down was probably improvised as well as it doesn't appear in the shooting script. Lance Henriksen caught a dose of food poisoning from the milk and yogurt combination that he had to spew up when his chest was pierced by the alien queen's tail Having his, this lactose combination sitting around under hot studio lights created a bacterial breeding ground. It started to smell so bad after three days of filming that most crew members got hesitant to go near Henriksen, who reportedly endured the smell and never complained even once. Didn't they have that problem during the first movie, too? They didn't use nope. dairy in the first one. Yeah. They used water with, um, like, a white oh. colorant. I thought someone said something about that in the first no, it said in the tree in the trivia for that one. It was um, they didn't use milk; they used something else because they knew milk would spoil under the studio lights. Not these guys, wow. apparently. <laughs> these guys yeah. no James fun. Cameron, like, no, we're using milk because yeah. it's good for you. It's good for oh, here we go. In contrast, sure in contrast, the crew of the first Alien film opted not to use milk for Ash's death scene where he also spews the milky substance out of his mouth as they recognized a fluid made of milk would go sour under the hot lights. Yeah, as we <laughs> talked about. Uh, the grappling gun Ridley used at the end of Alien is briefly visible in the opening scenes while the escape pod door is being cut open, still stuck at the bottom of the, of the escape pod door where the gun jammed 57 years earlier. The alien Wait, nest- what? The grappling gun Ripley used at the end of Alien is briefly visible in the opening scenes while the escape pod door is being cut open, still stuck at the bottom of the escape pod door where the gun jammed 57 years earlier. That's crazy. Yeah. That's cool. It's good that they left that little detail in there. Mm -hmm. 
The alien nest set was kept intact after filming. It was later used as the Axis chemicals set for Batman in 1989. When the Batman crew first entered the set, they found most of the alien nests still intact. I'd be walking away with one. Right. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, Aliens was never shown to test audience because editing and scoring was not completed until the week before its theatrical release. Only a studio screening was performed for 20th Century Fox executives, which was enthusiastically received. Marketing experts later said that Aliens probably helped save Fox, which was in desperate need of a hit at the time. When Fox execs saw an early cut of the film, they complained to producer Galen Hurd that it looked like the money had all been spent on sets rather than special effects. Hurd took great delight in telling the execs that a majority of the sets that they were seeing in the film were indeed miniatures or optical effects. The artists behind these images were very pleased that their work had fooled the, man the money men. The movie's budget for production design was almost running out when it was time for constructing the set of the hypersleep chambers aboard the Saluka. Salu yeah, I can't say that. Salako. Each chamber cost over 4300 to build, meaning they could only afford to make four capsules. Production designer Pete La Peter Lamont had the difficult task of telling director James Cameron that they had to omit the, scene, the entire scene, but he devised a trick. Clever placement of mirrors and camera angles made it look like there were 12 chambers instead of four, allowing the scene to be filmed. That's a good director. Right? That's good directing right there. I read that before I saw the scene, because I, whenever we would pause the movie, I would look up more trivia because I knew there was going to be a lot. And I read that before I actually saw the scene in the movie, and I was like, holy shit. Yeah, like, it looks, I never yeah. would have guessed that. Uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely. It, yeah. Uh, there was a lot of animosity on the set. The British crew was openly hostile to both James Cameron and Gail Ann Hurd. In their, uh, in their eyes, Cameron was a nobody who had not made a decent film yet, as they hadn't seen Terminator, while they openly mocked Hurd by claiming that she only got to be a producer because she was married to Cameron, and that they wouldn't take orders from a woman. Cameron and Hurd, in turn, despised the crew's lazy, insolent, and arrogant behavior. One of their few allies among them was a production designer, Peter Lamont. After the long and difficult shoot, Cameron addressed the crew by saying that one thing kept him going through it all. The certain knowledge that one day I would drive out of Pinewood and never come back, and that you sorry bastards would still be here. Cameron indeed never did come back to Pinewood Studios, but he later hired Lamont as production, production designer on True Lies in 1994, and even got him out of retirement to work on Titanic in 19, 1997. That, and he did take on, he did use some of those actors again, like... You know, like Sigourney Weaver is yeah. in his Avatar movies. Yeah. Um, no, he was talking about the crew specifically. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's just crazy. I don't know, man. I don't know why people... But then again, he brought half of the people he knows onto this movie because originally he did the first Terminator and brought on Lance Hendrickson and, mm -hmm. and you know, and Bill Paxton. And then he brought in, you know, he, he used uh, the girl who played Vasquez again in Terminator, Terminator 2. You know, so I don't know. I think it was crew because like, yeah, I think I think it explains later. But anyway, um, Sigourney Weir Weaver had initially been very hesitant to reprise her role as Ripley. She had rejected numerous offers from Fox Studios to do any sequels, fearing that her character would be poorly written and a subpar sequel could hurt the legacy of Alien. However, she was so impressed by the high quality of James Cameron's script specifically. Crap. Hold on. Lost her spot. Yeah. The strong focus on Ripley, the mother-daughter bond between her character and Newt, and the incredible precision with which Cameron wrote her character, that she finally agreed to do the film. She was, of course, disappointed when Cameron had to shorten the movie and cut the scene where Burke brings Ripley the news of just missing the death of her character's daughter, which Weaver felt would have completed the circle of the mother-daughter bond with Newt. But this scene was later restored in the special edition. None of the models or the original designs of the the Narciss, Narcissus, the Nostromo's shuttle from Alien could be found. So the set designers and model makers had to reconstruct the model of the ship in the interior from the interior set from watching Alien. The alien screams are baboon shrieks altered in post. Unlike American Baboons. Studios... Oh yeah, here we go. So unlike American Studios where crews were generally hired by the production at Pinewood Studios where they were filming, um, where the filming took place... 
they come with their own indentured crew who, who weren't used to working 12 hours a day, which is an average shooting day in the U.S. Bill Paxton later said that this that the film British film crew drove everyone nuts with their indentured work ethics, literally stopping filming in the middle of a complicated scene just so they could go have tea, go to the pub, or finish early. Michael Bean made fun of the British crew in the audio commentary by saying that they weren't used to working. It's true, though. We, they do have a very m- much lighter sense of work, like a lighter work ethic than we do in America. Like, we'll work seven days a week where they're like, yeah, no, I'm only working five, and you'll be lucky if I work the full 40. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you be here at eight? Mm, not, ten? Lucky if I'm here at ten. <laughs> yeah. And I need my tea time. Three yeah. of them, to be exact. <laughs> yeah. To bring the alien queen to life would take anything between 14 and 16 operators since the head, neck, body, legs, face, lips, jaws, and tongue all had to move independently. Stan Winston constructed a mold from fiberglass and foam, which was subsequently dressed with black garbage bags and moved by two puppeteers inside in order to shoot a test video as proof that such a large creature would be feasible. The fully built animatronic creature was so convincing that Steven Spielberg later enlisted Winston to construct the full animatronic t-rex for jurassic park in 1993 the power loader was brought to life with a combination of a stunt man sitting in the loader behind ripley moving the limbs wires holding it up and some miniature work no electricity was used to power the prop the scenes turned out so convincing that it fooled many businesses thinking that they could buy one <laughs> for a forklift that's pretty cool though right they were pretty convincing though they, they were, were pretty slick yeah James Cameron had especially, especially centered his story and screenplay around the character of Ellen Ripley, so he was dismayed to learn that not only had Sigourney Weaver never signed on for a sequel, she had not even been contacted yet to reprise her role. When Cameron finally contacted her himself and gave her the script, Weaver showed interest, but the studio objected against her increased salary demands, as she had become a, become a bankable star in the meanwhile. The difficulties surrounding her contract negotiations were such that Cameron and Gail and Heard recently married announced that if the deal was not done by the time they got back from their honeymoon, they were out. When they returned, no progress had been made and shooting was due to start in several months. So Cameron, had no, who had no intention to make the film without Weaver, but was also very wary of the deadline scenario he had created, devised a scheme. He telephoned Arnold Schwarzenegger's agent for an informal chat and informed him that, thanks to his newfound standing in Hollywood following The Terminator, he was planning on making this film entirely his own by writing Ripley out. As Cameron anticipated, Schwarzenegger's agent immediately relayed this information to his colleague representing Weaver at ICM, who in turn contacted 20th Century Fox head of production. Both men determined that under no circumstances whatsoever would Ripley be written out, wasted no time in selling sending a uh, sealing weaver's deal cameron later expressed his relief that the bluff worked out because if it hadn't the film would most likely have been canceled altogether yeah i don't think the film would have worked without ripley absolutely no, not, not. so i mean they could add more people in there but you're losing that star powered engine i mm-hmm. guess well they you had the the survivor of the previous film yeah, is always yeah your how most... you gonna have that survivor and then not have her in yeah. this one it's like, always your most bankable character in the next yeah yeah so. When the set maybe were... maybe if they did a second one and then did the third one and then brought Ripley into the third one, I think that would be like an oh shit yeah. kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like yeah, but then you're you're kind of but then you're you just selling be... yourself short on the second movie anyway, right? So. And if it doesn't make enough money, then they're not you don't get do your it. bank. Well, the only yeah. way they yeah. could have done that was saying that they sent out a rescue team to find them, and then they ended up finding that that planet and making a whole story about that. You know what I mean? And then. Later, the third one comes in and Ripley comes back. That'd yeah. be the only way you, they could have salvaged that. I don't know. I just... It still wouldn't have been as good. Yeah. But uh, when the crew set crews were looking around for floor grading to use on the Salako set design, they asked a local set design manufacturer shop if they had anything of the sort. Indeed, they did. An immense pile of old floor grading that had been sitting out on the back of their shop for the last seven years. It was left there from when they tore down the set of Alien in 1979. There was, I was wondering where they found that. <laughs> there was talk of bringing Swiss artist H.R. Geiger back for the second movie to do more design work, but James Cameron decided against it as Geiger was still working on Poltergeist 2 The Other Side, and Cameron had already hired Ron Cobb and Sid Mead for the futuristic buildings and crafts. Furthermore, there was only one minor creature designed to be done, and that was of the Alien Queen, of which Cameron had already made some drawings. Cameron later admitted that he had considered asking Geiger, but feared that the eccentric 
eccentric artist would be overwhelming and difficult to work with. Geiger later expressed some disappointment to Cameron about not being asked back, but still called the film's designs and execution beautifully done. Yeah, but you can de- you can tell that like Geiger's missing from this movie. You know what I mean? Like at the very least, I don't, I mean, I guess they did a good job with the Queen, but if you were to let Geiger fully do that maybe here or maybe he did i don't know because they did a really good job with the queen they did a really good job replicating geiger yeah so i don't know i don't know if it would have been i i feel like they did a good job replicating geiger right yeah i guess like the tunnels and stuff how they well that would have been hard to do just just all yeah you're just essentially replicating what the set designs looked like before on the first one yeah that's what i'm saying is that they, they, they didn't they i don't think that they I'll give him credit where credit is due. The queen is awesome, but you know, they didn't come up with, I guess the things that made that universe what it is. Right. Yeah. According to, uh, a pwn, the guy who played a pwn, Al Matthews, when James Remar was still cast in the role of corporal Hicks, Remar was using an Ithaca model 37 pump action shotgun. The same one that Michael Bean can be seen using as Hicks in the film and accidentally blew a hole in the set of, the little shop of horrors, um, which was being shot in the adjacent stage to no shit. <laughs> at Pinewood Studios. Matthews then said to Remar, Where the fuck did you get live ammo? Remar was recast by Bean because Remar got busted for possession at the beginning of filming. According to him, he had a terrible drug problem at the time. Who is this? James Re- James Remar. Who the fuck is that? I'm not sure. Name sounds really. He was they supposed, he was supposed to play who? Hicks. Movie? Yeah, eighty six. Oh, so Hicks got Hick, or Lance. the guy. Yeah, Michael Bean yeah, Michael was Bean recast Re- as Hicks. James R E M A R. So he shot a hole. Oh, into the little. He's Dexter. Horse. He's Dexter's dad. Oh, I did know that. Yeah. Shit, because I looked that up. Before. I think I knew that too, actually. Damn. Yeah, that's anyway, Dexter's yeah. dad. Um. So yeah. He shot a hole. In he the shot a hole. Yep. Set. Mm-hmm. Well, at least nobody got hit. <laughs> <laughs> Although it is probably her most memorable line in the film, Carrie Hen has said that she hates the line, they mostly come at night. Mostly. Her friends still occasionally tease her about it. Yeah, because no, why did she laughing. say mostly? I was laughing because I was thinking about fucking Seymour get shot. Seymour. <laughs> 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 yeah, but I don't understand. Like, why? Yeah, why does she say it? She maybe it's her delivery. It was supposed to be delivered different. Because she's like, they mostly come at my, night, mostly. Like maybe it's just to drive it home. Like they don't always just come at night, though. Like don't just take it as that. Yeah, them. you know. Yeah, she's like, they mostly come at night, mostly. Yeah. You know, she should have said it more like that instead of... Yeah. I mean, yeah like, her I, delivery yeah. was a little... Yeah. I think her, it was out of context. The dead pandas, pandas yeah. at the end. It was end out of context, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. It was more like there was a period there instead of there should have been a comma. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Lance Henriksen was almost denied entry into the United Kingdom when he arrived for filming. He had been rehearsing Bishop's Knife Trick in the USA with several different ni- different types of knives since he didn't know which one James Cameron would use for filming. When he arrived in London, London, he had carelessly brought all of the knives with him in his lug- luggage, and the customs official was quite alarmed at what he saw. <laughs> yeah, because he's the type of dude that you're like, that guy looks really sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he could kill somebody. Um, he really does, though. He looks like a serial killer. He's yeah. such a sweetheart, though. <laughs> um, I like really, that. really like <laughs> this. Sigourney Weaver... Re- Weaver refused any information on the behind the scenes making of the queen so she could keep the character real in her mind. So oh. she did not see that queen until she was upon her. Hell yeah. Yeah. The name of the company, Whalen Yutani, was only shown once in Alien on a beer can, spelled Whalen without the D, Yutani. According to myth, the name was taken from the names of Alien director Ridley Scott's former neighbors. He hated them. So he decided to dedicate the name of the evil company to them. In reality, the name was created by conceptual designer Ron Cobb to imply a corner on the spacecraft market by an English-Japanese corporation. According to himself, he would have liked to use Leyland Toyota, but obviously could not. So he changed one letter in Leyland and added the Japanese of his, of his, not Scott's neighbor. The longer special edition, which... Broadcasters seem to show instead of the theatrical version, a version clearly explains why 
Ripley becomes a protective mother to Newt. Also, that the end scene is actually a battle between two mothers, Ripley and the alien. Bill Paxton ran into friend and calling James Cameron shortly after the latter had been given the director's job on the movie. Paxton jokingly told Cameron, I hope you write me a good part in it, and was subsequently called to audition. He got a fake plasma rifle to use, but he got too enthusiastic and later thought that his performance had been too over the top. Luckily, Cameron loved the energy that Paxton had displayed and offered him the part of Private Hudson, the movie's comic relief character. Paxton happily accepted turning down the offer to play Zed in Police Academy 2, their first assignment. That's probably a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Smart move, Bill. Uh, he's one, of, he's one of those characters where I felt, my God, the audience is going to be so ready for this guy to die, said Bill Paxton, referring to Hudson. Not really. No. Towards Not the really. end, I was, he I was made, he, waiting for him to die. No, because he made the, he, he's the one who made that character so likable. You know, it wasn't yeah, written yeah, that way. Absolutely. He made the character like Yeah, him. it's because of who's playing him. Yeah. And, you know, it doesn't matter, but around that time period, whenever I saw Bill Paxton acting like that, I always see um, Chet from Weird Science. Oh. Always. Just because of the delivery, I guess. Oh, I don't yeah. know. The model of the dere- derelict engineer ship, engineer ship is seen in the extended edition is the same model used in the first film. Fox had turned the model over to effects wizard and prop archivist Bob Burns, who had the prop sitting in his driveway. With some repair, it was able to be reused for the brief appearance in the film. It was sitting in his driveway? Uh-huh. Why? I don't know. Several... I wonder where it is now. I don't know. My driveway, probably. <laughs> I don't know. Say, fucking bring it here. I'll take care of it. Right? I think it's worth probably thousands. Knowing how Hollywood is, that, it's probably, probably like... Now paper mache at this probably, point probably yeah they don't take care of nothing Mm-mm. several references to robert a heinland's novel starship troopers the prominent use of the military during the orientation when hudson asks if this is a bug hunt the power loader which was based on the combat exoskeletons in the book and the use of the term drop the original design of the xenomorph head from alien was initially copied it had a ridged forehead with a layer of semi-translucent loosened gel covering the ridges to make it appear smooth when James Cameron saw the heads as a work in progress without the gel, he thought the ridges made the heads more interesting, so the gel was left out. The ridges, the difference in appearance between the creatures from both fin- films has since been the subject of several fa- fan theories, one being that the ridge xenomorphs from Aliens are much older than their only hours old counterpart from the first movie, and have lost the covering gel as part of their natural matri- maturation po- process. Another theory is that the ridged aliens are a warrior cast within the species specifically bred to protect the queen. Okay. I forgot about that second one. Yeah, that makes sense too, actually. Yeah. Equally. Uh, Melissa Joan Hart appeared briefly as one of the children at the Hadley's Hope Colony in a scene that was cut from the theatrical version of the film. Really? Yeah, I didn't see her, but I wasn't looking for her either. Yeah, I wasn't either. James Cameron based his screenplay on an unrelated story that he had written around 1981 titled E.T., until he found out that Steven Spielberg was making a movie called E.T. the Extraterrestrial. He first retitled it Protein before settling on Mother. It was about a female human creature hybrid that had been genetically engineered to be able to survive the toxic toxic atmosphere of the planet Venus. The story also contained a conglomerate company that funds space mining and terraforming, and the term Xenomorph originated from this treatment. The end saw a human protagonist, not unlike Ripley, battling the creature in a power loader as the hybrid tried to protect its offspring. The Colonial Marines were added at the request of producers David Geiler and Walter Hill. Cameron was also writing Rambo, the first First Blood Part Two at the time, and his research into Vietnam veterans and post-traumatic stress disorders proved very useful when writing Ripley's story arc. The idea of a planetary atmosphere that is toxic to humans was later reused in Cameron's Avatar. Uh, two queen heads were used, one of which was designed to be sturdy and durable, the other lightweight. Both heads incorporated hydraulics and cable controls to articulate the jaws and lips while the heavier hero head had additional functionality including a working inner jaw and the ability to tilt on the puppet's neck the two stuntmen inside the puppet who were were concealed within the queen's test chest controlled her tet yeah (laughs) controlled the creature's four arms one of these stuntmen nick gillard later played in a, a background prisoner character in aliens 3 yeah it wasn't it wasn't in the budget to create the opening 
imagery of a robotic arm cutting into the shuttle and discovering a sleeping Ripley. James Cameron paid to have the scene included out of his own pocket. Uh, Sigourney Weaver based Ripley in Aliens on a very unsentimental environmentalist friend. Uh, for the scene where the Marines drive to the nest and the APC director, James Cameron instructed Carrie Hen to whisper something to her doll, Casey. When it was time to record additional dialogue for the scene and Hen was asked to repeat her lines, she admitted that she had just whis whispered something like, this is stupid, why am I talking to a doll? The recording team then had her say, it's okay, don't worry, it'll be okay, which matched her mov mouth mov movements just enough. Hen later admitted that she never told this to Cameron. That's it. I just thought that was really funny that she was supposed to say something encouraging to her doll and she was up there saying, this is stupid, why am I talking to yeah, a doll? Yeah, why would I talk to a doll? I've been hiding from aliens for weeks. Yeah, why and am I talking, I'm, I'm talking to, to a doll? I'm talking to a fucking doll head. Why am I talking to a fucking plastic head? All right, well, that wraps up Aliens. Uh, let's figure out what we're going to watch next week, everybody. Yeah! Marnie. Yeah! Next week's morning. <laughs> you need to lay off the caffeine. I had milk. Good, you good, you good. The boob? Aliens 3. The boob picture? I used to look at that picture all the time when I was a kid because it was always hanging up in the living room. I remember asking one time why she was naked, and I don't remember what dad answered. It was, it was something. Everybody's naked under their clothes. Yep. That's not what Slither. You said. Slither. Another horror movie. Okay. Well, Slither. Fuck it. We're How doing many it. horror movies do we add in there? No, I guess. Not quite. Mm, 67 not not as many as we had a couple weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's dwindling. All right. So next week we're doing Slither. Uh, yeah. So be here for that. Um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Check out our TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, and of course our YouTube. And don't forget to comment. Uh, check out our Rumble. And do us a favor and go over and give us a rating on Spotify you, or whatever you know you listen to our podcast on. If you are listening Wherever to it us. is. Wherever it is. Wherever it is. Wherever we are, rate us. <laughs> and if you don't, if you don't, and if they, like YouTube, you don't have a rating system. So what you do is leave a comment card on the comments. <laughs> like, like a comment card. Oh. Know? If you can't yeah. rate, then dad's going to be in your closet tonight. I mean, it's that simple. Some of them might want me in their closet, though. Who is that? I don't know. I did not look. Jesus. <laughs> Everybody's blowing our phones up all of a sudden. We got oh, shit to day. do. No, We're I never podcasts. have anything to do. This is podcast time. People only ever decide I know my mom just tried calling me. I'm like, ignore. Sorry, it's mom. Kathy. It's mom. Yeah. No, don't answer it. Just ignore it. <laughs> Sorry, mom. We'll get back to you in a minute. <laughs> anyway, uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And you guys have yourselves a wonderful week. Next, year, next week, we are doing... Slither. Slither. By James Gunn. All right. Love you. Bye. Okay, bye. 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 bye.